uh, our sound system broke, so a bit of a random surprise. We're going live. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. No, no. Uh, the one winged <laughs> angel himself. Welcome to High Rollers Dungeons oh. and Dragons. Oh, oh, wow. It's a D and D. What? That was pretty smart. What? The one winged angel himself. Exactly. Oh. Nice. Not an angel. Nice. 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 Welcome to High Rollers Dungeons and Dragons. We are a D&D show here in the UK. You know us, you love us. If you didn't, welcome. I'm your Dungeon Master, Mark <laughs> Sherlock Kings. Nice. Joining me this week, we have... Chris Trott and Kim Richards. Hello. On one side. And on the other, the inseparable twosome, the gruesome twosome, Tom Hazel and Miana Cow. Gruesome. Gruesome twosome. I'm feeling pretty gruesome this week, so um, yeah, it's good. Gruesome in that how frustrated you make me feel when you play <laughs> together. Um, the troublesome twosome, perhaps. Troublesome twosome. Yeah, thing. Team Rocket over there. Katie, Katie's not with us. She's, not feeling, uh, she's still not feeling very well, so no Katie with us this week. Yes, thank you, children. Um, <laughs> Bottom up. Hey! We're trying to be serious over here. Sorry, carry on. This is Welcome. why we're not put together. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Uh, first things first, before we get the episode started, Chris Trot, tell us about our sponsor this week. Now, I know I'm told to be funny for these segments. I like you being funny, yes. But sometimes humour has to be put aside for some awareness for serious issues, and mm -hmm. I think it's a good point. Okay. That I should raise an issue that's going on right now. So there's a growing epidemic in the gaming community that's getting out of hand, oh. and unfortunately, it's all too easy for you to become a victim too. And it's called looting. So oh. everyone knows a looter. As the battle ends, the dust settles. The character's funny. exhausted, covered in cuts and bruises. But there's that one party member, their eyes fixated on that corpse, drooling, hungering to ask the DM, can I loot that? As they point to an amorphous blob with literally no clothes on or any pockets. It doesn't matter. Raising awareness is one thing, though. But what can we do? What, what can, can we, we do? What can we do? We do. Loot them! <laughs> How can we stop our dearest friends from succumbing to this greed-filled disease? <laughs> Thankfully, there are people out there that can help us. Really? Oh, okay. All so right. I'd like to hear about it. The website D and D Beyond <laughs> is taking a stance. What? Written in not one but three articles by oh. Dan Telfer on both the facts of a looter. Ooh. But oh. also some solutions okay. as well. Ooh. How do you think he'd solve the problem? I, I mean, I'd like to hear. Okay, so for example, they create an item called the Bottomless Bob, which is a dead NPC Bob that Bob. you can infinitely loot. <laughs> <laughs> he's, That's he's broken down like the individual accessories that Bob has. Here's some really good, interesting ones. Here's one, actually, I'll just give you one. Okay. Uh, Bob's Wig of Bobbies. <laughs> it's got like a magical aura, which kind of like gets the looter. You know, oh my god, it's magical. This, yeah, it's right. like compulsion to yeah. shiny. Mm. But if it's dispelled, it turns into thirteen thousand three hundred and fifty-six hair clips that scatter all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a no. It's a lesson to be learned there. Okay. okay. You have to roll yeah. like for everyone. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. So please check out the article. Uh, if there's a looter near you, uh, maybe guide them to D and D Beyond. Yeah, Thank that you. sounds very good. Um, incidentally, Kim, you did get down the notes that I yep, gave you I before we started streaming. Yeah, I got down the streaming. ceremonial gold dagger, the statue of Starbane, and the red gemstone. There you go. Stuff we looted from last episode. Looted last we. episode. Um, okay, next couple of things. People who are in Italy or would like to travel to Italy, <laughs> myself and Kim are both going to be special guests. I think I mentioned this before. We're going to be special guests at Luca Comics and Games, yeah. which is happening at the very beginning of November. Um, pretty much, is it next week or is it the week after? Week after, not next okay, week. Okay, not next week, the week after. Um, where we're going to be at Luca Comic and Games. We're going to be doing a live stream game there, uh, along with Wizard of the Coast, with Joe Manganello, oh. Arkan the Cruel himself. Kill that guy. I really can't say his Awkward. surname, and I'm so Manganello. nervous about meeting I, I, him. I'm because always I'm worried about it. Call him Marshmallow. Just say Joe. Just say, hey, hey Joe. Yeah. Hey, Good Joe. to see you, Joe. Hey, Joe, hey. Joe, Joe. Hey, Joe, I'm Joe, Joe. I'm just going to end up being like, hey, Marshmallow. <laughs> say, say, Manga. Manga. Lemoncello. Manganello. 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 We're not going to get it right. Hey, but he's playing in a game with us, um, along with some other people that haven't been confirmed yet. So we're going to be doing a live stream game where it's me, Kim, I'm GMing it with Joe and some other folks. There's also going to be a panel which will be live streamed. Um, the game, very excited to say, it's going to be set in the Eberron universe as part of the new Eberron campaign setting Ooh. coming out very soon from Wizards of the Coast. Um, so you can check that out. And if you are at Luca and Comic and Games, we're going to be walking around. I don't know if there's going to be a formal meet and greet, but there will probably be something. If you just um, shout at us, we'll quite stop. Quite a lot of people are going to come and, see it. Yeah. And yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah. Like the actual event, if, you're, if you can get to Luca in Italy, 
highly recommend it because it looks like a gorgeous city and place. City all over, isn't it, really? The Comic Con isn't in a convention center. It takes place in the medieval town. Oh, nice. So they're doing, I know that the D&D guys are doing Adventurers League. They're doing mm. like um, a, a whole host of games mm. in the dungeons of the city. Mm. So you that's go down so cool. into the dungeons that's and play badass. Dungeons and Dragons in a dungeon. That's cool really shit. Cool. So it's pretty Damn. fucking cool. Damn. Um, and it should be live streamed over on the D&D channel as well. Uh, so you can check that out. Another couple of things. Don't forget, if you'd like to subscribe over on High Rollers D&D, our Twitch channel, you can get loads of cool emotes. Um, we've got loads of emotes going on over there. We also, it's a separate chat if you want to go and join that chat over there. Um, use your Amazon Prime. If you've got Amazon Prime, don't forget you get a free Twitch Prime sub every week. And then finally, the last thing I want to talk about, we still do have the merch sale going oh, on. Oh, still on in a major way. But the other thing I want to mention is it looks like this isn't 100% confirmed, but uh, I will simply say... If you are looking for some very cool, very exciting new High Rollers merch, keep those wallets ready for around Black Friday, beginning of December. Mm. Um, we've got some really cool stuff. We've been working really hard. Um, me and Katie and the merch team at Fourth Floor have been working really hard to find some really cool stuff. We've got some really lovely new designs. Super excited about that. Get yeah. hype, basically. Um, and, and anything else? Halloween. Halloween next week. Oh, two things. Actually, good reminder. The first one, the break this week, we're going to do similar to what we did two weeks ago. Yes. Where we're not going to have a hard cut. We're just going to keep rolling. I'm going to read out some donations and stuff like that. Um, and we're just going to do a quick five minute rest for the guys. We'll read out some donations and then roll straight back into it. So don't be surprised if there's no formal break. Yeah. Um, and then the second one is next week. It's Halloween. It's gonna be our Halloween episode. Ooh, our Halloween. Halloween. Because me and Kim are away for me and Kim are away for the actual Halloween, like um in in uh, at the end of the month. Yeah. Um so the twenty seventh is the closest we can get to. So next week we're gonna do our Halloween episode, which means we're gonna be dressing up. So. We're gonna get spooky. Costumes oh, I don't Definitely. know about the spooky. Ah! Yeah. Well, I've, uh, you told me I was creepy. Or... You're going to be creepy. Yeah, that's that's definitely for sure. Costume. Don't know what this guy's doing. <laughs> Everybody else is I know what he is. Him. I know what he is. Okay. Yeah. I, I, it's as what? I expected. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, you got some intel. Yeah, I was I, ho I was hoping that he would uh, do something to compliment my costume. I mean, it kind of does. Oh, interesting. Um, oh. Well, you'll see not, them all. But... Yeah, okay, we'll see. <laughs> well, you'll see them all. It's going to be exciting. I will tell you now, it's mine isn't going to top Bowsette. I'm just going to put that out there well, now. What could, though? Nothing could. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. nothing could. Also, um, <laughs> Nightjar figured it out. Yeah, okay. The overlay's fixed on High Rollers D&D now. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Right, and with that, uh, let's run the intro. Dun-dun. 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 dun dun That's on you. That is on you, <laughs> That's Thomas. On me. Right, okay, yeah. go. Welcome back to Aroes. Last time, our adventurers, having gained their airship, the Storm Chaser, they had begun traveling towards the continent of Suvona to uh, reconnect with some previous allies as well as pick up supplies en route to a place called the City of Glass. Mm. However, during their travels, they encountered an orc settlement called Yamalotai, um, investigated as it was being attacked by strange creatures from the sea, Sahagan. You landed, you assisted the orcs of Yamalotai, as well as a triton baroness called Erin Coralsong in repelling the attackers, and learnt that the Sahagan had recently become much more aggressive, intelligent, and were equipped with starbane weaponry and armour. No. You decided to accompany uh, Erin Coral Song deep into a place called the Cold Light Depths, a ravine uh, where the Sahogan had been lairing. Along the way, you met a triton called Drexia, a siren and singer who accompanied you for some time in search for her lost sisters. 
You made your way down into the depths and through a priestess's cave where hatchlings, Officer Hogan, were being uh, bred. You also encounter a shield generator from much more advanced technology that Sentry destroyed um, and bypassed. And then eventually you rescued the prisoners and were left with a strange portal. Quill, using the power of the Eye of the Storms, investigated what would happen if he were to travel through it and saw he emerged in a room with no water and instead a strange symbol reading, a strange uh, sign reading out Aegis V. Uh, Wait, what? What do you mean? Or as, as Quill thought, visage. Well, no, because you, when you mentioned the sign, you said, it's, you might not be able to pronounce it, it's very weird. And I was like, <laughs> okay, this is just a jumble of letters. So it is ages five. I read it. This is for the audience, not for you. Okay. Uh, it's bizarre. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but uh, it seems to lead into a strange metal room made, well, a strange crystal room made of dark crystal, <clears throat> similar to the Starbane ship that you had once explored beneath the Rosewater Lake. Drexia and Erin Corosong both help escort the uh, trapped Tritons to safety, leaving you in these caves, these underwater caves, with the portal before you. Yeah. Um, um, you are still under the effects of a water breathing spell. Um, you have found... I think it's like 20 hours left? Yes, something you've got like like something like 18 hours left yeah. on it. It's quite a long time. Um, and I can cast it again anyway. Yes. Yeah. So as we jump back in, the water is incredibly cold down at this depth. It is very dark. The only real light down here is any of your own magical items or this glowing portal, this purple portal, which is just hovering in the middle of a kind of worked stone chamber between the caves themselves and the rudimentary prison that the, the Sahogan had constructed. Um, the Tritons have all left and are now slowly beginning to make their way stealthily across the ravine back towards their, their village, uh, leaving you in these depths with the decision of what to do. And we can see through this portal, right? As if it no. was like... The portal is opaque. It's just one single color. Quill had to use his power to see what would happen when he traveled three. Quill is the only one who currently knows what's on the other side. He hasn't described that to us yet. Uh, I think, I he, think he has. Well, we yeah. can, at this point, hand wave and say he's described what yeah, he Yeah, because I also said that uh, I felt massive ascension as well. Yes. Um, yes, you felt yourself literally like rising quickly up through the air. I will, again, to remind you of what the, the, the room that Quill saw looked like. It's a large square room. Um, it has dark crystal walls. Um, along one side has these metal shutters, these kind of thick metal shutters with some sort of mechanism to open and close them. Um, there are also large tubes around the room that seem big enough to fit a humanoid into. There is a metal door on the southern wall um, and the, uh, the sign of Aegis, Aegis V and in Roman walking Nichols. through. Aegis V, I should say. Walk. And Quill, when he saw himself, because he asked what would happen if I walked through this portal, he saw himself just walk through and immediately appeared in the other room, clearly no water, able to breathe. And he looked at the southern door across the way, or...? There's only one the door. door. He was looking kind of top down, as if like disconnected he from his own his, body. He saw himself Yes, through. yes. That's the power of the eye, as he's seeing technically the future, not from his perspective. Third person. Yeah. Disorientating in somewhat to see yourself and not no, feel your body moving. But. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's what's through there. Um, and we're still down here, but I mean, I've got very little spells left in me. Uh, and also, we've just been through a lot of encounters. I don't know if we should try to rest here, but then the Sahagan could come down. I couldn't sleep right now. It's extremely cold. Okay. That is the other thing, it's like you are currently underwater. Yes, you can breathe, but yeah, like Lucius and in fact everybody, I think Quill as well, Sentry and Nova, I think you guys aren't affected by it. I think you are a little bit. Um, Ayla isn't affected by the yeah. cold as much, but neither is Sentry, but yeah. Like, yeah, Nova, Lucius and Quill, you are really cold. Like, it's not cold enough that you're taking damage, but trying to sleep and stuff would be really hard down here. Yeah. Um, okay, I mean... I... It's either that or we go through there and we'd have to press on from there, I suppose. Ayla kind of points towards the bodies and are like, what should we do about all of these bodies? Should we just leave them here? Makes it look like they were attacked and the Tritons ran away? Um, In case anybody comes back to check on this place. I could put it through the portal. Yeah. 
I mean, anything that goes through there. I don't know. That's I mean, they're still going to figure out that something happened here. She points like the destroyed shield generator and stuff like that. But yeah, there's not much we can do. No. To be honest. And also, I've seen the room, but I don't know what else is up there. I mean, what if someone follows us through as well? What if we go through and we can't get back? What if we get in trouble and we can't get back? Well, that's the thing. I don't know that if we go through there, if people will know that we're there. If we get in there and we then are forced to press forward because then alarms are raised or... What if Starbane's up there? Well, uh, that's what um, uh, Clyde uh, mentioned before. He said the priestess, um, Shantani, would talk to Starbane through this portal. Through it? Through it. We shouldn't do it, we should go back. We shouldn't go through. He said there was a corridor of light and they came back and gave us weapons, artifacts and armor, so this must be it. We came through a corridor of light and I just at the shield, broken shield generator. This is where this... all their power and their weapons and technology is coming from, which is not a good place to be, really. We should just destroy it and go back to the ship. Destroy the portal? But, I mean, if they destroy it, they'll just make another one. At least then it won't be here, it'll be somewhere else, right? Like... I mean, at this moment, we know where it is. We don't want them to find some other tribal race and goblins or something like that and start giving them technology. Then what if, what if Starbane comes through that one and comes through there and, and comes back everywhere? What if he comes find us? What I, if he finds us? I mean, what if he finds us, Clear? I don't think Starbane will start his assault from under the sea. Why Does not? It... He's already started. He's but, done it once, Quill. But this is them using the Sahagan as a threat. But I... He's attacking from areas that we wouldn't expect. That's a great way to attack. Sounds like we're doing a lot of asking questions that there's no way we can know the answers to. No. At, least if we, at least if we go through there, we might figure out what's going on. We are exhausted from our battles. That's, that's the one downside is I'm not fresh to go in there and start fighting anything that's on the other side. Like, what if we go through and, and find a place there to, to rest? Well, you did say that it was an empty room, right? It's an empty room, but again... For how long? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we could try. Uh, worst case, we can if try. We, if we try and rest here, I think more of those Sahagan are going to come back here. And you're going to freeze to death, Lu Lucius. Yes, very cold. And I don't imagine the Sahagan, they're serving them. I don't think they will come through attempt them. to come through to the ship itself. Maybe some of those priestesses, but we killed one here. I think I think at, at most we'd find this priestess, the, the one who who has been speaking to Starbane and Zakira. I, I wonder if we need to stop her, because she's clearly the figurehead at, at, at this, and I gesture at all the kind of henched up Sahorgan. She will be well equipped if she's in direct communications with people like Starbane. She will, and if, if, if we die now, then what happens? I mean... There's, there's no, there's, they could be, they could kill us all so easily. Quill, you can send messages, right? Yeah. Quill could send a message, let them know what we're doing. Contact someone we trust. I mean, I can't right now, again. If we rest it. If we rest, I can. At least to our ship. Yeah. So that then Araya can send word and maybe do something about this. Or send it to the important people of, say, Gusthaven or the, the contacts we've made along the way. Yeah, I mean, I can send messages to people all over the place. I could send one to the Sky Prince. I could send one to Arvel. I could mm. send one to Orion, obviously. What about Hesper? I mean, I'm not sure through communicating with champions, I'm not sure what the gods... Well, you also know that Hesper already knows about cats. Yeah, he does. Um, yeah, but does he know exactly, you know, hey, he's doing this to this whole game. It's true, you don't know that. Um, hey, Lizard just shrugs. It's like, well, I'll do what you guys think, but in my life I've always felt that if we're here and we've got a chance to stop this, then we probably should, right? And we yeah. could just destroy it. We could just, I could just smash it now and we could leave. I but think this is a really good opportunity to almost get one up on Starbane. Or at least hinder its progress. How? How, how, will, we, how will we do that? We go in smashing Sentry. They won't expect it. There's no way they can expect it. For mm -hmm. people to go to the Sahagan, like, settlements and... For us to chance upon this Yamalotai, right? There's... What are the chances we would have come across that? 
they don't expect a counterattack. They just expect this to be a communications for the priestess to facilitate the Sahagin to get their weapons so that they can secretly attack a coastline that they have been doing. Yeah. They don't, they're not expecting us to go back through their portal. I mean, they, they might be. They could be watching it right now. They could see us right now. I don't, you, I don't know, you don't know how powerful they are. I've seen how powerful they are. Do you remember Zarkira? Do I, do I remember Zarkira? <laughs> um, I, both, neither Callus nor Zarkira, you never would have seen no. them directly. Um, you would have heard the reports of the battles. You would have probably seen, especially with Solvin, Solvin was very heavily besieged by both, um, I mean, it's all one force, it was all one empire, but very clear that there were distinctions between Zarkira and Callus' troops. Um, Callus tended to have more of the fiends, more humanoid soldiers. Zarkira had a lot more magical creatures, um, undead, um, intelligent undead, like vampires and things were also under Zarkira's command. Um, and yeah, you, you would know a little bit. Zarkira tended to inspire quite a, a fervent violence and, and kind of um, war, uh, kind of warlike attitudes. Um, Kallus was much more controlled, um, more of the, the law to the chaos in a sense. Um, but both both were very powerful. I mean, Solvin was mainly under attack by you know cruisers that would fire you know weapons down, sending legions of troops against Solvin's you know walls and things like that. Yeah. Um, and it was eventually uh, the the mixture of the sundering itself, which kind of caused these great tidal waves, but also there was a con concentrated attack by large battle cruisers that just wiped a lot of Solvin out. Um, but it was all very tactical and very um, methodical. Yeah. that yeah <laughs> um look i mean we've been ever since we were teleported to voxar we've been running and preparing but this is what we've been running and preparing for are we are, but are we prepared enough no true then i mean can we ever be though the the longer we wait the greater starbane's forces grows at the very least we need to to stop um the priestess because she's the one who's doing all these rituals and teaching others to do these rituals on, on how to transform the Triton into That's those a good monsters. Point. They made that monster thing. That thing was really hard to kill. Yeah. Imagine if they still had that power and knowledge to do more. We can stop it spreading at least. They clearly got to a point where they can make them, but uh, maybe that information hasn't got further than this settlement. I think Ayla's not the smartest in terms of intelligence, but she'd probably make the point of like, also, didn't they say like Solvin's, like the Tritons live in Solvin's ruins, right? Yeah. And the Sahagan probably would attack that. So if we stop these guys here, that might help protect the, the Solvin that they live in now. If they're going to attack it again. Which is where we're heading next. So we have the chance now. Either way. Because like if we let them get stronger here, they're just going to attack more Triton settlements. They're just going to go after more and more, you know, Triton places. That might include the new Solvin. I know, it's scary. We can do it, you can do it, you're tough, Sentry. I don't know if I'm tough enough to handle this. Um, <laughs> you're tougher than me. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not neither. We've lasted, you've lasted longer than all of us combined. I've already fell once. But... I've fallen twice. <laughs> but you, su you survived the quill. sundering. The great cataclysmic failure of Siaska and everybody, you survived that. What is this in comparison? I, I don't know, I don't... I'm in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, he's turning blue. Yeah, yeah you're starting to look a little pair of my arm. arm. <laughs> his arm. I'm looking like Nova now. <laughs> I'm, I'm not terrified for my own mortality, you need to understand. I'm terrified for you guys. I, 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 I don't know what I'd do if I lost one of you guys again and I don't know if I could handle that, honestly. But I admire, I admire where you guys are coming from, and you got, you're, you're so brave. You're so brave, and let's, let's, let's do it. Let's just do it. The more I think about it, and the more I remember the Sundering and Starvane, the worse it's gonna get. Let's just go. I like it. I like that let's thinking. Just go. Do you want me to go first? Yes, strongest first. All right. Ayla will just swim through, and she vanishes. As soon as she hits the, the purple portal, her body just whoosh, phases through it, and she vanishes. And you are left. 
Well, we can't leave her alone, can we? No, we actually have to go now. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll go. Okay. I'm going to take Sentry's hand and just give it a squeeze. Oh. Just out of interest, what order did you go in? So we have Ayla first, Quill. Uh, I guess I went off. Quill, <laughs> Lucius. I'll probably then... be slowest to move. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll just... Yeah. You'll kind of amble through and then it sounds like by taking... And then Sentry comes in last. last yeah. So, as you all step through... Insta-death. Spikes. You feel... There is, a, there, is a, there is a sudden Sphere rush. Annihilation. <laughs> there is a sudden rush as you feel your body pulled away at a great distance. You felt this once before when Callus transported you across the continents to Voxar. And you feel yourself thrown vertically up, higher than you ever could imagine possible. And then you stumble. Um, having gone from swimming in free water, you feel yourself tumble and you have to catch each other. Ayla kind of catches you one by one um, as you stumble out into air and warmth. Not incredibly warm, but warmer than where you were. There is a sleek black metal crystal all around you. The room is near pitch black, except for the dull purple light of the portal itself. Um, and maybe a flickering dull amber glow coming from above the door. Just this kind of... The door's opposite us. It's on the southern wall. Um, so yeah, directly in front of you, but imagine that you're, uh, you're a bit south. Um, you can see a few features of the wall. Strange metal tubes line the kind of walls to the east and west. Uh, there is also metal shutters on the north. Um, these big, huge metal shutters that almost cover the whole wall itself and a metal door with the words Aegis V, or Aegis V, um, that reads uh, across it. There is also soft music. Yeah. Hmm. Like a choir or an orchestra playing deep, barely audible, but just kind of almost reverberating through the walls, coming from seemingly everywhere, but soft, quiet for the time being. Creepy. No, quite melodic in a sense, very beautiful, not in a haunting way, in a genuinely pleasant way. Can we understand what they're singing, like the words they're singing? Yes, I think you would. I think it is in common. It's, it's hard to hear, it's very faint, but it appear, it, it's, um, it's a, a war song. It, it's singing about victory and freedom. Um, uh, about rising up, about uniting under one banner. Um, it's it's a it's a war anthem in for the Starbane Empire for Emperor Callus. Cool. Would I have heard that before? Yes. Yes. It would have been maybe like maybe not actually because mm. it, I think it would have been played less on battlefield. It's okay. not a battlefield song. Okay. Yeah. This so. is more like a like Hype. played in the ships like yeah. as yeah. you're going to war kind cool. of vibe. So, Morale boosters. But I mean the words you hear the words and, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and that is what you see in this immediate area. How how does it? I guess I wouldn't know too much, but how does it compare to the the short the small ships that I've been on? So obviously I've been on like a crashed skiff. And the underwater one. Like... You would say this is completely different. Yeah. There are faint lines of crystal power. Um, whatever is you that you know, Eterna's normally power these things. There is a uh, there is a faint um, purple kind of crystalline seam that seems to connect the port the portal that you've emerged from. There is a crystalline seam that leads out. And you've also just reminded me. Yeah, that, that was my next Nova question. and Sentry, because Sentry oh. currently has Helios <gasps> bound. It takes a few moments of adjustment and you get this, this sense that there's something wrong, something deep, and you realize it's coming from that connection to the Eterna. Okay. There is a dark feeling, a cold feeling deep, deep below you, hundreds of feet. It's a creeping sense of dread tingling up your spines. Helios probably just speaks. Something is wrong. There is an Eterna here, but but it is not it is not like the rest of us. Tiangong, for you, Nova. Shit. In the brief moments of Tiangong, quite can't quite communicate fully with you, but there is enough that they can give you these senses of messages and and visions. 
you see flashes of almost like a memory of Night Frost in the Rose Water ship, in the Rose Lake ship, but a sense of much worse. That this is like corruption or yes, yeah. corruption. And it's and flashes of memories to Alessandra, the, the vampiric scholar, talking about how Eterna who are forcefully fed life force mm. can become corrupted. So essentially what they were doing to Night Frost. Yes. Yeah. But you get a sense that where Night Frost hadn't fully corrupted, Trash. this one has. Oh boy. Um, uh, d does Tiangong sense any other bits of Tiangong? Not here. Not here. No. Okay. Something is wrong. Can you say that to everyone? Yeah, yeah, you can all hear Helios. He, he, Helios can choose to communicate with Sentry, but he generally speaks to all of you. Is it telepathic or just vocal? No, this is, you'll hear it in your head, so right. it's telepathic. I think I might stick to the old messenger rings. Yeah. Just to keep everything mm, really okay. quiet. Yeah. Sure. I feel it too. Tiangong feels it too. There's something bad here. I think it might be a corrupted Eterna. Oh, um, okay. What does that, does that mean no saving it or? I, I, I don't know, but, but remember Night Frost? Sorry, Lucius. Um, it, it, I mean, they were feeding Night Frost girls, right? Mm -hmm. to, to, to corrupt him. And we stopped it before he, he fully went mad. This has happened to whatever is on this ship. Before we get any further, is it worth checking our exit? and seeing if this portal works both ways while we have underwater breathing. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a good plan. Um, you do notice Ayla is quite quiet and she's looking at the door and the lettering. She's just kind of looking at it weirdly. But yeah, do you want to try the portal? Who wants to try it? Sure, uh, I'll do it. You step into it and it, yeah, you immediately like, you kind of have a moment where you, like the cold hits you and the water and you're suddenly swimming and you're like, and then you float back through and you teleport back and it works both ways. I was the wrong one to do that. <laughs> it's really cold. But at least you know it works. It works. We can, we can escape as long as we keep our underwater breathing. Right. Now where do we stand on carrying on? I mean, we can wait here for a little while just to see if anything rushes us or knows that we're here. You're out of your eye ability, are you not? Yeah, I won't get that back for a while. Um, so we can't see it, like... Um, let's oh, see what I can am do. I fully out? I am fully out. Um, uh, I can do a divine sense. Maybe that could help. Would that alert people to our presence if you do it? Um, I don't know. It just allows me to sense celestial fiends and undeads, though. I so will. I, I will say that I think sentry because it's an ability you have. You don't. You've never encountered an instance where they know that you're using the ability. Okay. Um, I think that divine sense is just like a pulse from you, like. It's just a, if you become aware of them, it's like a life sense kind of thing. But for certain creatures, they wouldn't know if you used it. Okay. I, I'm happy to tell you that. Awesome. Do you want me to give that a try? There's yeah. no harm in it. Yeah. Okay, divine sense. So what's the range? Feet. 60 feet and it detects what again, sorry? Celestials, fiends and undead. No, not within 60 feet. Cool. What about beyond there? <laughs> <laughs> you don't One know. One day we'll catch them out. Yeah. Hundreds of feet know. below. No, I didn't um, get anything from that, I'm afraid. Well, no, that's good. That's, a, that's, that's three things positive. we can rule out within the immediate that's area. That's true. Um, the light just kind of flickers again and then goes away. So the light, mm. is it It like seems a like almost like a... Or, yeah, guess. it's like a crystal embedded in the ceiling above the door and it just flickers with orange light and then it just dies down again. Did you say there was a, a shuttered window with a, a lever by it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does Nova want to pull the lever? I don't want to pull it, but I don't want to set off any alarms. It's up to you. Do what you want. Yeah, there's like a... You go to the north wall and there's these long, thick metal shutters, like a built-in, like a, almost like a window. Um, and there is like some sort of lever on the side. Um, very ornate, very well made. Is it like metal? Is it crystal as well? No, it's metal. The window and the, and the shutters are all metal. And then it's embedded into the black crystal wall. Does it look like it operates the shutters? <laughs> yes. Yeah. What if, what if there's a billion monsters behind that shutter? And just, this is like a feeding box. I want to see where we are. I don't. I like blissful naivety. Because I have a theory as to where we are. In the poop shoot? Uh, where do you think we are? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start reaching out. And just tell us the where lever. you think we are before. You pull it? Yeah. So you hear this kind of. 
it, and there is a great, there's like a sound of like squealing metal. And you realize that the metal shutters aren't really, it just opens. And what you see before you is, at first there's confusion as you see these huge chunks of black crystal and metal kind of float past. And pieces of cable and coils of metal maybe larger pieces of rock and it looks like it's been burnt huge kind of galvanized burnt edges and then as it begins to part it kind of creates a gap there's so much of this stuff it's this huge field of debris and then as it parts you see up quite close erois from up you yep. you are staring out into what is commonly referred to as astral space Yep. There is no there is no shielding. You could literally stick your arm out How there. Are you able to breathe. Astral space. You can breathe in astral space. Well, oh. not you can breathe on this on this wherever you are now. Astral if you were deep in astral space, you can't breathe. You, there's no air. Um, but you can just it's different. It's not you're not in space. This is D D. You're in astral space. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, you are literally it appears, and I'd say that Nova and Quill, now that you're looking out, you can see that you are amid an immense debris field oh. made of oh. broken it. battle cruisers, all Starbane battle cruisers. Um there appear to be hundreds. Smaller, some smaller, some larger, but it is coalesced into this floating, orbiting debris field around the planet itself. So I'm gonna go silent, wide-eyed. And then immediately start hyperventilating. <laughs> I, oh, I was right. I was right. I was right. We're in space. 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 That's a rose. We're here. The, we, oh, Keep it to we're the, in the messenger space. rings, at least. Yeah. Yeah, in the messenger rings. <laughs> Good. Okay. 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 But why is it all totally ruined? Where are we if this is just destroyed? Ships, space, we're in space, we're in space, what? we're in space. Uh, <laughs> they're battling Hadar, are they not? But Hadar isn't this close to Arois. Is he not? Well, I'm no use at this point. You, you saw just... it on your way back, did you not? Yeah, but that was, I guess that was like what felt like a super quick journey. I mean, yeah, you, there's, it's hard for you to tell how far away that was. You got the, impre you got the impression that when you travelled back, um, from your encounter in the Astral Sea, which is different to this. Um, it's not quite the same. Mm -hmm. um, you have the distinct feeling that you traveled a great distance very fucking quickly. So it's hard to say, oh yeah, that's like 10 hours away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you have no idea. And whether it, you, you don't even know if that was Hadar. You saw a battle. You don't know what it was. Hmm. Wait, this is really high, isn't it? The, I mean, higher than any... you look out and you can see, like, through this tiny gap, you can see, like, the clouds, like, from looking at a planet from space, like, you know, probably not that far above it. And in fact, you, you can see that there is a discoloration just beyond the debris field. You are beyond the cradle. You're, you're kind of outside of the cradle, oh, the protective layer. Is there anywhere just sitting on the floor. <laughs> I'm just on the floor, head and hands. Based on, like, the Aroas map, where are we above right now, or are we like sort I'd of... I'd say Quill being a navigator and a messenger, you're the, probably the only person who would be able to work that out. I think anybody else who would ask me that question, I'd say like, you don't know. Okay. But I think with Quill's knowledge, you can identify the shapes of the continents based on maps that you've studied. Mm -hmm. And you think that wherever you are now, you're probably over um, uh, El Seraf, which is the kind of topmost continent if you're on a map. It's this yeah. long okay. continent at the top of the map. Right, okay. Um, you can see that El Seraf is very mountainous and you can see very high peaks on whatever landscape you're staring down at. I'm looking... You think you can see a tiny, kind of, it's actually quite large from where you are, but there is a shape that also seems to be drifting across oh, right, okay. one of the sky cities you imagine. Um, can, so if I'm looking like along the, I guess, horizon, uh, well, the shuttered window is, is it's big, but it's not, right now it's like the planet almost fills it and this debris field is just, occasionally the planet gets blocked by the amount of debris right. floating in front of you. Yeah. It's immense. This field is huge. That's what I mean, looking so, along how long is the debris field. Planet here. Yep. Us in a little box. Yep. Windows pointing out like that. 
Like, you're, you're currently pointing down. Have to look, so, so imagine you've got... Looking down on you're it. You're looking down on the planet, yes. But was stood... Yeah, you're stood normally, yeah. There is clearly gravity. I would say Nova is enough of a scientist to know that gravity is... But the gravity is wonky. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. Yeah, you feel like you're in a normal room, but you're staring down at the planet. You think about stretching out centrifugal beyond. force or something? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So well, no, Nova's, Lucius isn't. <laughs> Nova's still hyperventilating, and now she's like automatically patting, looking for a book, looking for her books, looking for her notepad. <laughs> I left them on the damn ship! What? I need my notebook! I need to be sketching! I have a book on space! I mean, if you, if you want to draw that, we've got maps, but I think we need to figure out what the rest of the ship is. And also, Ayla kind of turns yeah. around and is like, yeah, what are we doing? We, I mean... What Sky City is this? That one down there. What? The, the, the Sky City is that one? Or the, what do you mean? Yeah, we're like, a bit higher than that now, Lucius. We're beyond the cradle, outside of Aroa. You can't go outside that. We are. We are. I mean, that's how... Ah! That's how <laughs> keep it to the messenger ring. Oh! Shh! Oh, no! <laughs> this is really Lucius. bad! We'll be on Siaska! Shh! Shh! This isn't... I'm in my underwear! <laughs> I'm going to sit right in the middle of the room. Close the shutter! Close it immediately! No! It's not bad! It's space! I've always wanted to be in space! But in, under these circumstances? Probably let's not. Just, let's just breathe, everybody. Just big breath. Take a breathe. Fortensa. Take a breath. I, I need to find. I need to find Jasimir. We we need to we need to get control of this spaceship, and then I can find Jasimir. Get control of the spaceship with what? Yes, I don't know. Spaceship. <laughs> we can find Jasimir. I've always wanted to be in space. That's okay. We're here, but these circumstances <laughs> are not the correct ones. Oh, I've got teeth. Marks First of all, what do we do? The, the, the music. I, we, all right, Where if you guys don't start coming down, I'm going to start slapping at some point soon. <laughs> okay, I'm calm. Good. I'm calm. No, don't slap me. I'm I don't not want my slap you. beak slapped off. Right. We need to figure out, A, why this place is just uh, ruined. B, where we even are. Or C, how close we are to just the worst things. And I'm talking about bad guys. People are in the ship, potentially. They must be. If we jump out. Does anyone have their feathers from Gusthaven still? W j jump, jump out of the window? <laughs> don't, don't do that. Yeah. Don't, no, bad. Don't do that. Don't do ba that. Bad. Please, please we'll don't just go that. back down don't to do a no. Don't do that, please. Do we not? So, Nova, seeing as you have studied astral space, I will tell you that, yeah, basically, whatever force is keeping, whatever force is generating gravity here is, or must be artificial, probably the Eterna. Um, if you go out into astral space, there is no gravity, there is nothing to anchor yourself to, you will just carry on with whatever momentum you have, like real space. Um, you can't, there's no oxygen, so you can't breathe. Water breathing won't help you because you're not breathing water, you're breathing nothing. Um, you'd probably be okay because you can hold your breath indefinitely, so you'd be okay. Sentry would be fine because Sentry doesn't need to breathe. Yeah. Everybody else would be fucked. <laughs> um, you also know it's freezing cold, like as cold as the bottom of the ocean. You would inevitably take cold damage every second you, or every six seconds you're out there. You'll take cold damage every round you're out in astral space. Damn. Um, mm. Yes. Uh, if, you, uh, if you had a flying speed, I would say that Nova would know that f creatures that can fly could probably move around astral space normally. Flying speed. <laughs> He's got one arm. He's got one arm. You just go in circles. The fuck, man. <laughs> so, Give my next question bad. is... No, Lucius. Bad. Space. Bad. You die. What you are you doing now? Okay, so... Nova's just pressing her face against the window. Is this... I mean, there's no window. Like, you press your face and you're like head... Because the shutters are quite wide. It just... You're like there and you can... You can smell space. Like, you can, your air starts getting thinner as in you get closer. In which case, I'm just like... <gasps> Breathing it in. <laughs> it's hot, but there's like very little air comes yeah. in. So I get dizzy. You can tell that the room, the oxygen is within this room, and then the second you go beyond it, it's gone. So I'm just gonna be like, there's no glass. There's no glass. There's. I'm, I'm breathing space. Pull over back. I'm smelling through. space. I'm you touching get, space. You get pulled back as your hand no. comes through. Ayla Please. pulls. The, <laughs> Ayla shuts the shutters. Good. We need to focus on the, the where yeah. we are right now. Uh, we might have bad guys to smash. 
in the context of Erois and planes, mm. are we in a different plane right now? No, technically. No, we're no. in space. Well, I Ast know, but astral space is the space between planes, because planes, planes are planets. Planets. <laughs> planets. Yeah, that's what that's what planes are. They're planets. Okay. Cool. Um, well, just astral space cause... is just the gap between them. Yeah. I guess in theory. Yes, it technically would. Ca it counts as a different. It counts as a demi plane. How about that? Oh. So okay, that's that is. A so lead things into like banishments and stuff. Oh, sending. Yeah, because there's a five. If I'm in a different yes, plane, yes, there's a five percent chance it can fail. Do I know that? Yes. Okay. So five percent chance. Not a big deal. Okay, so here's just wait. the good news. Great view. Huh? Mm. Our planet is so beautiful. It is very beautiful, actually, looking down on a rest, especially with the cradle, the coloured lights. Yeah, I'm kind of not looking. I'm it's, sound the, the, the window's floor. shut now. Yeah, anyway. it's shut now. The bad news is if we did want to use sending to tell people about things, I mean, it's a hell of a distance. Well, stick your head back through that way. I, I, I mean, I could stick my head out and shout, and it would be probably as effective. What do you mean? No, it's, I meant it's the portal. through the portal. Oh. And no, then yeah, send it, idea. and then come back. <laughs> I'm just saying, if we get further into this and we can't get back, then it, it, then. What do you mean we can't get back? Don't say that, I, Quill. Come on. I don't want to come back. Yeah, please. Quill. Look at these three. Like, don't just. What? Positive language. We positive can get language. back. We okay. can pilot the spaceship. I'm not negative. Okay. Kayla, this is amazing. Yeah. Okay. To be positive, we've been here for how long now, and nothing's come after us, or nothing's come into the room. We are, as I mean. Uh, even though we're in space and in the middle of who knows where, safe. <laughs> I don't feel safe, Quill. That didn't fill me with this any the, sort. No. Guys, this is the last place Starbane would expect us to be. Right under his nose. Right under his nose, Sentry. I don't want to be under Starbane's nose. No, he can smell us. Look, I, Tiangong can't sense any more shards of Tiangong. We know Starbane has several shards of Tiangong. He's not here. What about this? Very good. <laughs> Very good. I'm please, Daddy. Does, does, <laughs> now, does our hero have an eternal? But I, I'm guessing so. Okay. If, if you were the second, but but that's the thing. If what, she has an eternal, I can't tell if there's. What if? Right. What if one of the shards of Tiangong is the bad thing? He'd be able to tell. I mean, he he says that the corrupt. What if it's so corrupted and you can't tell? It's not Tiangong. Anymore. It's not, but. He's not... I don't know. I, I don't know. Either way, we're here now where they won't expect us to be in a room that we might actually be able to get a long rest. <laughs> How do I say that in RP? You can just say, like, let's, let's take... Let's we recover. need to like recover. Like a long rest doesn't need to I be asleep. We need to recover my magical energy. Yeah, well, but it's also, it's just like, let's take, let's take some time to like, just get our, get our shit together. And that can be a long rest. You can yeah. take eight, it's eight, it's eight hours of getting your shit together. Yeah. It can be a mixture of like a bit of napping, a bit of like Lucius warming himself up and like, Trancing. you know, yeah. We need to get ourselves in a better position Taking, to- Eating some food. Explore this place properly. Get do you want to do, you know, the, that's the question for me next, is do you want to just take that long rest in this singular room with the portal that you're in now? Or do you want to go and explore a bit and then take a long rest if you find somewhere more suitable. I feel like it might be better if we were somewhere that wasn't a portal. Because the other thing is, yeah, like if anybody, if the Sorgon come through this portal, they're going to stumble into you during your rest and you won't get a rest. Yeah. Let's have a, yeah, let's... I guess we, um... No, it's not when I say it. I don't want to say it. We m move through the door? What if it's space? What if all the doors just lead to space? Then we hold on well, and don't go too far. Here's the thing, I don't think it will be bad unless we, we somehow parted from the ship. There's some artificial gravity, clearly we can breathe here. Maybe it's the corrupted Eterna that is powering that. Obviously it would be bad if we're all the way out there, but look, I just stuck my head out the window and I didn't die immediately. Yeah, but you're Nova. But I breathed, I smelt, I smelt the space. But and and it smelled cold. You're, you're from, you're a space, you're a space. Uh, thanks. Wow. <laughs> I've broken all of you. <laughs> so quill. <laughs> let's, okay, let's, let's give it a try. Okay. Let's, okay. Deep, deep breaths. If, 
be fine. If we take a short breath, it's not here. breath, a short break. I, I could then go invisible and, and, then, and then go and investigate and find another room for a long rest. Sounds a great idea. Let Nova go explore the ship by herself. Yeah. She... Someone needs to go with her. <laughs> but if someone goes with her, then... No, I can cast it on two people. Oh. I'll go with you. Well... Deep breaths. But I need to take a break first. I, I can't. The, the magic, you know, I'm just, there's nothing. Needed a need decision. I mean, I'm the same. I think... Do you want to find a better place for us to have a longer rest? Yes. <laughs> okay. I think right. we shouldn't then be by the portal if the Sahagin come through. Fine. Then I think we have to go through the door then and okay. find a better place. Maybe they have a cupboard somewhere. Okay. <laughs> they won't look in a cupboard. Do you going up to the door, Bill? That's true. They wouldn't look in a cupboard. No. Sorry? Do you go up to the door? No. <laughs> yes. Okay. You move up to the door. Um, you don't see a way to open it. Oh. It's just like a metal door with no handle. Back through um, the wall. <laughs> All right. There What's... does appear to be like a, a crystal, like kind of embedded into the side of the wall, but it doesn't. It doesn't seem lit up. You touch it, nothing happens. I have my crystal. Your your what? The red gemstone. Yes. That I picked up. Yes. If I boop that, does that do it? Nope. When Ayla was looking at the door. Hmm. What's she doing now? She, she was just kind of stood in the middle of the room, just looking at the words kind of curiously. Oh, okay. And now she's just stood around with the rest of you. Okay. She's just kind of like looking around. Wait, what crystal have you got? I got it from the from the, the machine that was powering the... The shield generator? Yeah, that oh. one. It's, it's got the name of the, sh the ship on, look. Oh, <laughs> I thought I said Visage. Um, okay, try, try the door <laughs> with that, try? I guess. Okay, I'm gonna try. Yep. No? Well, I guess we're definitely safe. <sighs> Can I? <laughs> <laughs> Through the pole. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Sokorgan on the head. Ayla, ah! Ayla points at our muscle. Let's, I mean, if we, if the door doesn't open. I touch the crystal. You touch the crystal, mm, nothing happens. <coughs> if I touch Tiangong? That's an interesting question. Corrupt the Tiangong. <laughs> Get away from my baby. I didn't say it. I mean, mm. I did say it. It's Ooh. up to the mark to say it. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Technically, no. Doesn't work. Technically, no. It's a technical. There's, there's, there. I had to think there, but thinking it through rationally, no. Because there's and there's reasons, but you wouldn't know them. So. I want to know them though. <laughs> you can't. Um, yeah. Um, can I start casting detect magic? Yes. You cast detect magic. You casting it as a. Can you do as a ritual? Yeah. Ten so you minutes. take ten minutes. Uh, no, rituals. In that time, anything else? Um, I ain't got anything. Give it a try. I could ask that it open. It should, might take a long. Ada time. looks and so. Should we just try and like lift it? It looks like it lifts from the bottom. It looks like it shuts down. Yeah, uh, can give I'll it a help try. in the middle. Okay. As soon as the three of you approach the door, it opens. <laughs> oh. So it's, it's, it's an automatic door. Oh. I mean, you, you approached it to touch the crystal before. But just one person can't open it. You went to touch it. You moved next to the door and touched the crystal. It didn't budge. As soon as Sentry, you and Ayla move up to it, it opens. Hmm. Why is I'm going to back off. You back off, it stays open. Ayla, back Ayla off. backs off, it closes. Ayla, what? Ayla steps in, it opens. I back off. Sentry backs off. Sentry backs off, it opens. Ayla, it opens when Ayla moves towards the door. Uh, this, is in, this is strange. Why is this, this is opening? Weird. It responds to you. Why? You're the only elf why? here. No, he's an elf. No, he's a high elf. Yeah. But why would wild elves open yeah. doors to wild ships? Why me? Why is this opening? This is weird. I don't like it. Maybe, maybe it's your ship. No. What? No. It's crazy. I mean... Uh, she steps back. And it's like a... How do you spell Ayla? A-E-G? No. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. No, that's an anagram. Uh, Bizarre. <laughs> it's weird. It is weird. Either way, you that's don't good. You recognise can... any of this, do you? I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, I don't. Nah, not really. Can't. Mm. Eyes glance. Yeah, she's kind of like looking. She looks awkward. Yeah. You're looking a bit flustered, Ayla. <sighs> I mean, that's probably just space madness. Speaking out of character, yeah. we, she hasn't mentioned any of this. She hasn't mentioned, so, she hasn't no, she mentioned never, the dream she never stuff. mentioned the dream stuff. And that's the thing is, I think that part, like, Ayla probably didn't even, because it was like a real, like, 
shocking thing that like she barely remembered herself. So, um, so she's just kind of like, yeah, no, I feel like maybe I've I'd seen those words before, the the ones on the door, but I don't know how I've seen them. Is Star being your dad? No. I mean, it's happened before. Technically, I don't know who my dad is. Uh, <sighs> oh. It's not Starbane. <laughs> well, this Look, is... let's just go find this other room. This is weird. I don't like it. Right, yeah, yeah. okay. Well, we can get the door open. That's good, but... Uh, it yeah, could just open think. for people that have names that start with A. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Could, yeah. yeah, that's Please, it. Please yeah. be that, yeah. I'm the only one with an A name. Mm. Yeah. But let's see what other doors you can open. Okay. Well, as you, as I'm assuming you leave out. Um, it leads into, the door itself leads into a corridor that seems to go left and right and curves. It seems to curve round um, so quite like, a long oh, wide curve. Yeah, it kind of, if, if I'm facing, if I'm the door, it curves left and right and it curves round. It appears to go in curves like a ring this. shape. Right, okay. Um, looking down, you can, you can go left or right. There's no doorways into the middle of this curve. There is, in fact, actually, as you look directly opposite you, there is another door. Um, thinner, but there is another door directly in front of you. So it goes left and right, and it's a, as a corridor, and then it's uh, there's another metal door directly in front of you. Um, and and corridors are the exact same as the room, like dark crystal, black with crystal. tubes. Yeah, uh, no tubes, just black crystal, and then a thin line of purple crystal ar around the bottom. Where did the which tubes glow stop dimly. in the previous room? Um, they just, they just the stop when they get to the southern wall. So it's there along the east-west uh, walls. They just okay. cut off, or they just uh, stop into the wall. They just go ceiling to floor. Some okay. shot at the front tubes, and more tubes. <laughs> drawing a map. Yeah. Yeah. And then port all over there. Um, anybody who, when you do step out into the corridor, there is uh, almost startling you. A kind of crackling voice it seems to come from nowhere. Parts of this station have suffered critical damage. Lower ring and docking bay cannot be accessed. Head towards your nearest escape route. Oh, uh, okay. and then it just and it crackles and vibrates. The gender is very neutral. It sounds both like a, a man and a woman speaking at the same time. Um, its volume decreases and increases. It says it once, and then it sounds like it begins to go again, and then just stops. Who said that? Uh, this is compromised. We need to go to an escape route, but, uh, an exit. Okay, so we should do that. Well, but we don't know where we are. Out. Are we in the lower ring? Are we in the... It's clearly functional <laughs> enough know. that this priestess has been conducting business here and talking to Sakura and Starbase. This may have just happened. We don't know. They could have just literally just been hit by something and we've just stumbled into a wreck. Yeah. I mean, it was, what, a month ago when the, the Sahogan had all their weapons and things? About well, three, about three weeks. I think mission complete. I feel like it, there was some, some greater force has just stopped the priestess. Okay. Uh, I haven't come this far to go back now. I kind of want to know why the door opened for me. And I want to know why the door opened for her as well. And I want to confirm mission complete more than... If we open a door mm -hmm. and there's no spaceship because the spaceship's no there anymore because it's gone because of wreckage. But we still know that... We then get spaced. We still know that it's okay at least to the point that we can explore because we can feel that there's an Eterna here, yeah. and we know there's an Eterna here because there is gravity and air on this ship. Yeah. The, the, yes. These parts of the ship, but we could have just opened a door to a part of the ship that doesn't exist anymore. Then open a door carefully. Well, there's one directly in front of you, and then the corridor just begins to curve to the left What did the right. voice say? Lower ring. I'm going to repeat it. And... Um, I think that from where you are, you can't see any more doors along the curved ring. It just looks like it stretches on. It's, it's quite a gentle curve. It's quite large. Wherever you are is a large space. Uh, I could go through the middle. Yeah, I mean, that might just be a safe room. You approach the middle door. It doesn't open for you. Uh, Ayla. Yeah, she moves over to it, and this time it slides open. And it appears to connect to a very, a, a much shorter, maybe only about eight feet wide corridor. Um, that goes about, I want to say, 50 feet, and then comes to, you can see where a door probably would have once been, but it seems to have been jammed open. You can see that things have been like metal, crude metal twisted shapes have been stuck into the sides to jam open this like 10 foot wide door space, and there is just a dark circular chamber beyond that doorway. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Someone else has been here. Someone, yeah. yeah. Um, 
What what metal has been used to cram open the door? Is it like? It uh, looks weird. It looks like maybe like something that was large and has become twisted, like it was broken, and it, it just looks crudely slammed in with with raw force, like a like a really cheap tool or a you know like a, a crudely made door stop. Yeah, so it's not like a stabbing weapon. Or no, something. no, no. It looks like a piece of jagged, twisted metal. Or a nice to hold a spear or anything. Yeah. No. Um, the, the, uh, the, can we not? I'm starting to think that maybe something worse has happened here <laughs> than no. maybe they're just being a Valkyra or a Starbane here. It doesn't look good. I mean, this place is ruined, right? Why is it just... The question is, is how recently has it been ruined? Has it recently been ruined because of Hadar, or is this the remains of everything from when the cradle was formed? There's just this echoing silence. You realize that as you're stood here, there's not any sound apart from your own voices, your own heartbeats, the own sound of your boots scuffling across the crystal. There's no noise, there's no ambient. No sign of life. All, the only other sound is the music. And in fact, when that door opened to that black shaft, the music got significantly louder. It's clearly coming from down below. Was there another door? Uh, is this very melodic orchestral music? Yes, yeah, Sephiroth, is it? Um, <laughs> um, was there another door? <laughs> yeah, we're going back. Um, we're playing Final Fantasy VII downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's the demo for the new one? <laughs> I'm in! <laughs> Did you say there was another door? Uh, back no, there's the, the corridor curves round. Right. Mm. I mean, so if you'd like, I can draw it out for you if you give me a piece of paper and something. I mean, okay. So. I would have. I was trying to do it theatre of the mind, so like it's easier for a podcast. But if you guys need a bit of a helping hand picturing it, yeah. I mean, the Eterna's still powering it, right? Though, so I don't know how long corrupted a power corrupted Eternas keep their power for. Is it, it can go for a long, time. a long time? Guess oh. the clues in the name, right? That's true. Well, I think That's we need smart. to figure out where we are. Thank you. If we're on the lower ring, outer ring, upper ring, whatever the thing said, uh, then Did then we have a Did say a loading bay? Uh, said a ring and then a loading bay. So they, you guys aren't going to be able to see that. but So portal room at the top, uh, to the north, curved corridor leading left and right, oh, directly we opposite your circle. door. Mm. There appears the to be like a, a corridor, corridor, corridor leading to a black we cylinder haven't... chamber. Yeah. Nice. We haven't gone on the chamber the middle, yet. So we Maybe we should go back around the corridor. No, I just didn't realise we were going into the into the inner cert part of the yeah. circle. Mm -hmm. Part um, of darkness. Okay. Uh, I mean, should we try the rest of the corridor around? Which way do you want to go? Um, the safe way? Left so we'll say right. east or west, because then I know it. South leads into the inner circle, and then you have east and west. Okay. So imagine portal room is north. West is your side. Sure. Um, let's go east, I suppose, just east. along the corridor. So yeah. towards, yep, yeah, okay. So you begin making your way down. Um, my two questions. One, what order are you working in and are you moving quietly? Uh, I suppose. Okay, quiet. <laughs> I'm next to Sentry or behind Sentry. Okay. Yeah, the corridor is quite wide. Or it's about like 15 back. foot wide, so you can, you don't have to be yeah, in a I'll, line. Yeah, I'll go first. So you and probably sent an Ayla at the front. Yeah. I'm just gonna then, stay okay. with people. And then are you moving quietly? Yeah. As quietly yes. as we can. Stop but I'm stop all swampy and wet, right? I mean, you are wet, course. but like, you, you can still move quietly. Like, it's actually, you're not, you're, you've dried off, I would probably say. The traveling through the portal probably dried you quite a lot. Mm. I guess with like, um, what? That's not bad. We got the same. Oh yeah, no, yeah, that's fine. That's so fine. total? Yeah, that's bad actually. 10. 12. Nine. 10, 12, 9. 18. I will roll for Ayla. Does Heavy Armor give you disadvantage or? Yes. Or minus? Oh. So you roll with disadvantage, please. Sorry. <laughs> Sentry. That's a oh. three. <laughs> I thought it was. It begin was making your way. It begin was, making uh, your way down the curved corridor. And it does curve for some time. Again, you hear nothing apart from this music. Footsteps echoing against the crystal. Eventually, you come to what must be on the kind of eastern side of this outer ring. You come to a pair of double doors, one of which appears to have been broken open. Tom. 
Hmm? You can put it on there. Uh, yeah. Oh, put it on the screen. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, a pair of double doors that leads to the outer side of the ring. Uh, one of the doors has appeared, have been broken open by something clearly powerful. Oh, great. Um, and leads into a, a room, a big open room um, that stretches out. Uh, there is a long table with a dozen or so metallic chairs. Metal shutters form across part of the wall on the opposite side to the door. You can see that there are several broken slates of crystal um, on the table. One is half broken, flickering with a strange glow and runic symbols. There also appears to be maps, uh, physical parchment maps, um, which show some sort of citadel or tower um, that has rings around it. Um, uh, and there is a, uh, further down, there is a door that leads into a southern section as well, which is not open. Of that room? Yes. Okay. Um, so this looks like a control room. So at best, you would say almost more like a dining room or a meeting but it's room. Slates. It's got the windows, so it looks like it has uh, an outer slates window. Slates on the table. Yeah, crystal slates. Yes. Are they stood up like a computer? No, they're like laying down flat. Okay. Like the like iPads. iPads. Yeah. But we don't know that. Crystal um, slate. The citadel on the map. Have we seen that before? No. No. Uh, it appears to be what it appears to look like. I, I should have printed this out, but imagine a long cylindrical tube, so like a long cylinder, right, with a large ring, like a kind of ring around the top and a ring around the bottom. Okay, cool. And then stretching out from the central cylinder are many prongs, which connect to two huge curved shields, almost on the outside of this design. That's cool. Uh, out of character, it looks like a space station with these huge kind of shielded physical shields or energy. Yeah, shields. no, both physical. The parchment just shows them as physical. They appear to be made out of metal, connected by many different little arm struts that come out. Is there anything on there that says like A five? Bit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it says uh, uh, it says schematics Aegis five. Right. Outer outer hull. Uh, okay, so does it have like internal rooms? Not detailed. Um, all it says is in the very middle of the long cylindrical tube, um, there is a sectioned off which says Eterna. Yeah, so that central bit there, that's where the bad thing is. Right, is that where the music's right. coming from? So that's where we are. Oh, we're in the ring though. Are we in the top ring or the bottom ring? Looking at the blueprint thing, mm -hmm. does, do both rings have like rooms jutting out of them? Yeah. Hard to tell which one you're in. Right. Or if it's up Yes, or... that's pretty much yeah. bang on. Yep. Yay! Yep, essentially drawing, drawing it pretty much bang on. I drew it too. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, oh. Okay. Can I please? Can we rest here? That's what it looks like it. if you want to see it. We should at least that's a cool try the that door, I suppose, the other door, just to see what's in there. I guess I'm just literally here to open doors, but sure, I can do that. I mean, it's better than smashing the doors open. Mm. Smashing is more fun. Um, Ayla moves over to that door. This one doesn't open for her, though. Okay. Uh, there is actually a flash on the crystal by the door that flashes red. It's like, Ooh, pff, doesn't red. Say yep, doesn't say anything. Uh, I'm going to pick up one of these slates. Well, only one of them appears. Well, most of them are dull. They're just black crystal. One of them has a faint white glow, but it, it's broken, like parts of it are shattered. And there is this strange runic language which doesn't make sense to you. Nova? Hello? Look at this. This is a slate. It's got runes on it. <laughs> see? I can't see when you smushed it right up to my face. Can you read that? Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know, Mark. Can you read it? Um, I have comprehend languages. If which you cast means that. If I touch it, I can read it. Sure. Can you cast that? Uh, okay, yeah, I'll start. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing Same. happens, 10 minutes. Um, is anybody doing anything else, or do you just want to jump ahead to. I guess. Oh, oh you're detect magic. You cast detect magic, didn't you? Well, did you... well the door opened, I so you probably stopped. I probably would have okay. stopped, but yeah. Oh, I guess with the 10 minutes, I could do just that. Just cast detect yeah. magic. I was going to kind of re-up it. Okay. Detect magic. Um, so two things. So first of all, the L the red gem that um, Nova picked up glows magic. Uh -huh. uh, the slates have very minor magical enchantments. Well, the one that's currently working still has one. The rest don't. Um, the whole station 
has a very strong aura of magic about it. Like this whole place. Pulsing from the center? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right, I guess all like the, the blue, uh, purple lights even are sort of. Do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Um, and then with your Comprehend Languages, Nova. Yeah, the, the slate, after you cast Comprehend Languages on it, you make an Arcana check for me. Sorry, the um, Citadel picture in the middle of the mm. dining hall, is that flat on the surface or is it a 3D projection? It's, it's actually a flat piece of paper. Right, it's, it's actually quite paper. analog compared right. to a lot of the other stuff. Yeah, cool. it's a flat piece of parchment. But the parchment is strange. It's like disc it's a different color. It's got a slight red hue. Right. Um, not like parchment you've seen on Eroes before. Cool. Uh, Arcana check. 18. 18, yeah. So it takes you a few moments because you notice that the runic symbols are kind of broken all over the place and they're spelling gibberish and you kind of analyze it and the magical flow of whatever is powering this thing is a bit distorted. So you focus, kind of like a tune into a magic item, you feed some of it your own energy from Tiangong and it manages to form a couple of words into formal words. You get the sense that this slate is connected to similar crystal of a similar make. This crystal that's made the tablet is different to the stuff that's made the walls. It's, it's a different type of material. And you get the sense that these are magically connected to one another. And actually, you could bring up... There's, it's almost like a complicated version of the spell Illusory Script, which allows you to kind of like create a magically coded message on a parchment. But with this one, you can actually select different messages. You can like tap a symbol and it loads a different message. You can close that and then bring up... like it, It's like storing information, like a book, but it's just a single piece of crystal. Okay. Um, and the words you can make out are... Officers, door, lock, praxis, vard. Okay, praxis, hmm. vard. Mm -hmm. That's a, just one big acronym. I, I feel it. Visage. Visage. <laughs> it all makes visage. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> I am Lord Voldemort. Can I, like, um, have a look through the papers and just... Sort yeah, of... most of them are very worn. They seem to be a mixture of... Um, in fact, Sentry would recognize what some of these are. So alongside the large one of the Citadel, Aegis V, um, there are also what are clearly troop movements. Uh, they appear to be old battle plans. Um, they seem to address geography in, in Aroes that you know would have known existed, but probably don't anymore. Right. Um, they refer to uh, large open fields called Golden Fields, which um, is now part of Suvona, but was once part of uh, Aroes when it was all one continent, um, but it doesn't exist anymore. Um, and it appears to be, yeah, like it appears like there was maybe a, a battle meeting or like a plan being made, drafted oh, here. Yeah. Um, but long, long since passed. Wow. Um, I might just take those sure. ones. Yeah, you can write this down. Yeah, cool. you have um, old, old Starbane battle plans. Old Starbane battle plans, nice. Yep. Let's, I say we rest here. Uh, can I, just for a note of... Mm -hmm. Admin, can I take the schematics for... Sure. Yeah, it's it's the only outer hull of Aegis V. Yeah. yeah, it's only the outer hull. There is no map, um, necessarily. Sorry, you don't find the map to the dungeon. No, if there was a map on a parchment, <laughs> I'd be partying, I'd be dancing around those things. <laughs> Love those things. I'm yeah. going to move some of these metal chairs out of the way mm -hmm. and start trancing by lying down under, under the, the table. table. <laughs> I thought you might. Yeah, yeah, you can start. You can take a long rest here. This is it. Now's as good a time as any. Yep. Okay. Um, you take a long rest. I might make happens. a little like wall of Nothing happens. Chairs. Nothing happens. Damn, not even gonna make any Nope. Not gonna have a cow sneak up on us. No. <laughs> no, you you wait eight hours. Hmm. During that uh, eight The music hours. does change. There are periods the music stops after like maybe ten minutes, and there's like a couple of hours where there's no music, and then it begins again. And it's a different it's a slightly different song. Um, this one is more about, um, it's kind of kind of sad, it's talking about loss of homes and um, that's why we should fight and things like that. Yeah. Um, during uh, this is an old space station. that rest, mm. uh, could I also ritual cast identify on that gem? Yes, it is an elemental gem of fire. Oh. Um, and if you search for it in D&D Beyond, nice. you can find it. Yeah, I mean it's in... Nova's inventory. Yeah. Well, Nova can add elemental gem fire to her inventory. Cool. Ooh. I'm assuming I've still got that pearl that guy spat into my hand from <laughs> Rose Hall. Is there any like articles of 
accessories or clothing or anything from anyone here? Not in this room. It's just completely bare. Not in this room, no. Not in this room. So, Sentry, what did you find? You, you picked up a load of papers. I've just got some, um, I've got some old battle maps. Um, well, they appear to be battle maps from before the Sundering. There's a, some, there's a continent here, I think, called Golden Fields. Yeah. Way back before the Sundering happened. So this is an old... This destruction Ooh. potentially happened in the original Sundering. It looks like it. It looks, yeah, yeah but, it's pointing that way. But we do know that the portal is still in use by someone. Or it's been reactivated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that battle map, is that a battle that you know of? That, did that actually happen? or no? It would have been outside of Solvin. I don't think you would have been involved in it. Okay. No, I, have, I don't know. The, the, it, basically, the descendants of Suvona now, their ancestors would have been the ones who fought in that battle. Arvel probably would have known. Maybe. Um, okay, so... Alux is like, smash door. I mean, if you really want to get in there. Yeah. Wait, um, I think we can open it. It might be something to do with this. It says, Officer's Door Lock Praxis Vard. Okay. Uh, we just have to solve whatever Praxis Vard is. I mean, it's just spelling Vard. Is that the name of the officer? Maybe. Maybe it's the officer's room. Some Praxis yeah, that's Vard's why it's room. locked. Yeah, because yeah, you don't want scrubs just turning up in your room. So, without his body, he probably wouldn't open, right? No. So, we'll ailer it. All right. Hold on a minute. Ailer <laughs> gets ready, like... <laughs> I'm guessing, like, with the, the slate, I can't, like, get anything else out of it. I can't, like, no. It doesn't look like it does anything else. It looks like it's effectively so just... a storage for written information. Okay. But it looks like it has the ability to transfer information between other mm -hmm. devices. And there's no sign of any bodies or anything, like, here. No signs of life at all. No. Okay. Not a single one. Not even dust. Not even as if something decomposed here. No bones. Just nothing. It's just empty. It's like everyone just left. Evacuated. Can mm. I, like, whisper a praxis far into the door and just see what happens? It opens. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh. What? The door opens. When you when you say the words praxis far to the door, it opens. <laughs> There's a command word. Oh. Oh. Uh, inside, it leads into a smaller room. Um, <laughs> We were going to smash it. We were so close. He was like, oh. Uh, oh. In, inside, though, it leads into a smaller room where you can see a series of bunk beds, storage <laughs> units, <laughs> wash basins, food uh. stores, <laughs> after you complete your long rest. Um, hanging up, you see three sets of uniforms. Um, two are for uh, female kind of like sizes and one's for a man. Uh, for a man. Um, they appear, they are starving, they're starving uniforms. they humanoid. Um, they might not fit you well, but they would fit pretty much anybody except maybe Quill. Um, <laughs> Nova, they'd probably be quite short on. Ayla, they'd probably, as in like quite big for Nova. Ayla and Sentry quite short for. And Lucius kind of somewhere in the middle, but quite bulky. Um, but they are, <laughs> Love they're military you... uniforms. Uh, it's it's kind of like a jumpsuit in that it's basically like a pair of trousers with a built-in kind of vest top um, that has a discoloration of like purple slashes and vertical stripes. Um, and yeah, and then there's a matching kind of uh, hat probably that goes with it as well. And it appears to be, they've been laid out like they've been hung up. Awesome. Do I look like M uh, There are a couple of other things as well. Along with one of the uniforms, one of the women's uniforms, there is a, what appears to be like a cavalry saber in a, in a sling, like with a holster and everything. Um, the there is also, yeah, cool. yeah. There is also a crystal pendant, which seems to have a crystal that matches some of the ones around the doors. Um, and then there is also built into the wall. There is another one of these crystal slates with a runic keyboard um, that is just humming, and it appears to be powered. Oh. I will put on one of these outfits. Sure. That fits. It is surprisingly warm and comfortable. It's quite soft. Is it squeaky? Uh, no, it's leathery. not. It's not leathery. It's made from like a more of a synthetic material. Right. Um, so for you, it just feels like more like a kind of weird cotton. Um, but it's quite warm. It shouldn't be as warm as it is for how thin it is. I'll put on the crystal as well. Okay. It yeah. looks so you kind of wear that. Yeah, and a hat as well. It's like a little military I'll put on hat. That. Yeah. How does Helios feel about this? Yeah, what he's yeah. wearing, is it like that's immediately identifiable as Starbane? 
right? I think that like it has iconography that is similar to it. So it kind yeah. of has the the colors, black and purple, um, the symbol that there's like a little emblem of the um, the sword of of uh, Callus. Yeah. Um, around okay. with the broken star around the sword, so the emblem of of the Starbane Empire. Yeah, it's better than. Uh, that. Helios is is quite quiet throughout all of this, but there is just there. I mean, Helios isn't stupid. He knows that you were freezing cold and you were wearing no clothes. But there is sensory senses discomfort, yeah. but he's not saying anything because he knows why you're doing it. Yeah. He knows you're not putting it on because you're like, I'm going to dress up like a star bean! Oh, yeah. Destroy the rose! Destroy the rose! Destroy the rose! Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, Halloween! He's, he's a warrior as well. Like, yeah. He understands yeah. these things. Uh, Nova, huh? you can read these runes. What does, what does this one say? What does this plate here say? Uh, I, I need um, ten, 10 of your minutes. To, you took to a long rest. The spell's gone. Okay. Do the thing. One second. Um, he, How do you he, take his minutes? He, mm, I'm ignoring that. Uh, but uh, he, he, Helios. Um, yes. Thinking about the Eterna, the the, the, the corrupted Eterna that um, mm. I think you know is here. Um, is is there a way to reverse the corruption? There is a long, solemn pause. I'm afraid that I do not know much about this corruption. Alessandra has researched it more than I, but in all of her research, she acquainted it to the similarities of undeath. Is there a way to reverse a creature from being transformed into a spirit or a specter? Is there a way to undo the curse of vampirism? If there is, we do not know it. I mean, we brought people back from the dead. This is not the same. This is not an Eterna who has been destroyed. It has been transformed. So not like a Revenant, because a Revenant you can put to peace. Um, but I... Alessandra acquainted it more to herself, to a vampire. And I'm guessing she probably researched how to not be a vampire. She has. No cure is known. Is there any Even reason? the gods themselves cannot undo it. Is there any reasoning with, with, with the corrupted? I have never met one. But the pain, the anguish that I can feel, I'm not sure I want to try. Perhaps it is better that we destroy it, I just, whatever it has become. I just wonder that if we were to destroy it, if we take out all the oxygen and gravity in this ship. I do not remember much of my time in Callus' forces. I was kept as an armament for his lieutenants. But I believe that it does not continuously drain power. The Eterna provides power, but uh, it does not need to be constantly providing it. It provides it in bursts. Okay, Thank So you. perhaps we would have some time before these systems failed. Thank you, Helios. Mm, it is, if it is up to, if you care for my opinion. I would prefer to see whatever has happened to my brethren undone. Make it, give them peace, destroy them. Do not let them suffer in this cursed, corrupted form that they have become. And whatever we find of Callus and his empire here, destroy that as well. <coughs> you may keep the clothing, Master Lucius. I will destroy it as soon as I get my better clothing back. I suspect it as so. Uh, okay, I mean, we're all rested now, unfortunately, in that room, and not this one, but <laughs> okay. I think we're good to carry on through. <laughs> Hard, cold floor. <laughs> Praxis yep. forward! Okay, well, we're going to take a we're gonna take a break. Oh. So you guys take a break. I am going to read some donations while we do this. Oh, uh, I don't want to... The stream doesn't you. end. The stream de it never ends here on High Rollers. The fun never ends. Ever. Explore and a great space station for that uh, here on High Rollers. Oh, I don't want to keep exploring. Are you sure you don't want to keep exploring? It's spooky, Mark. Is it spooky? spooky. Is it spooky Scary that there's... Stars. Is it spooky that there's no sign of life, there's yep. no noise, yep. just creepy nah, music, you're right. and there's nothing going on? Oh, That's good. Fine. Thanks for staying, Tom. I mean, I was... Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Uh, right, well, I'm going to read some of these out. Thank you, Sid, for sticking around for this as well. Uh, Mere <laughs> Kitty, hope everyone is feeling better now and has a fab session. Excited to see what happens next, as always. Thank you very much, Mere Kitty. Uh, Dr. Caber Ant, hey guys, love your DD shenanigans. Thanks for them all. Rhiannon, 
you are my fave in how you seem to always have fun, uh, even when you rolled like last week. Wish I could be like that. Thanks for being yourself and the rest of you. I will pass that on, Dr. Kaba Ant. Thank you very much. Zelda Zorian. Hey, I'm going to eat some uh, giant buttons while I read these. Hey, double donation this week, as I missed one last time uh, when you guys played with Booth. I gave Mark an update the other day, but I'll say to the rest of you that I'm doing a lot better in uni now. Also, could you say hi to James, who should be watching? Well, hello, James. Oh. Um, uh, while you're in, what are you looking for? Uh, nothing. Nothing. You're looking for that vape, that yeah, sweet, sweet vape. I don't know where I put it. James Hunter, 44444. Four, four, four. Hello, high rollers. First time watching live from Australia. I decided to set an alarm for 2.30 a.m. so I can get up in time for the stream. I do want to say, Mark, you've inspired me to make my own DM campaign world. Fucking have the best of time, buddy, with it. It's really good fun. Iwa Yuri, just a small donation here to say thank you, guys. I've been wanting to try D&D for ages, and finding your group finally motivated me to try it out. My first game is next Friday. Super excited. And what is this I hear about Halloween party on my birthday? Well, ho ho, enjoy our Halloween special next week. Mm. Raging Rhino 101. Nearly 50 episodes in two months. Wow. First time live. Partly at least. Wanted to say hello and thank you for making me go from liking to loving D&D and helping me through a hard second year of A-levels. Uh, I have many queries, so expect many more donations in the future. Always happy to answer questions from the donos. Um, Dr. Caberan said uh, he loves the way that you play and you're always happy even when you roll like shit. Aww. And he wishes he could be like that and it's very, it's awesome to see. Oh, Dr. Caberan, man. Thank you. Probably your mic's not on, so you probably have to talk into it. Thank you, Dr. K. Brand. Nightjar, remember daylight savings next mm. Sunday means HR will be on an hour later for some yeah. people outside the UK. GMT. GMT instead of BST. Hour later next week if you're not in GMT. BST. Thank you very much. Metamanu, I don't like this Aegis place you're in. Can we leave, please? Please send my best wishes to Katie. Thank you, Manu. We will do. Lightning Wing Dragon, Nova's turned into the Space Corps. Space, 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 space! <laughs> Nola North. It's the Space Corps. Do you know that? Oh. Nola North is the Space Corps. Yep. 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 Oh. Uh, the Guild at Ravenmore. Howdy, Rollers. Unusual question, but I was curious if Mark would ever want to see a canon novel or short story set in Eroes' history, maybe during the first invasion of Starbane, and if you'd want to have total control over the details or not. Well, I mean, if in terms of if people want to write fan fiction stuff, all by all means, go fucking nuts. Obviously, if people want to get stuff published, that's a different story because it is our IP, we do own it. Um, but if people want to just write stuff for fun, I'd fucking love people to do that. I've actually, I had a, I did think a while ago about um, maybe using the Starbane Siaska stuff as a story for myself, as like a writing practice that I would pop, uh, put up somewhere because um, I think that that'd be quite fun. Uh, but it would also kind of give some spoilers. So I don't know, maybe. Uh, Bayfeather, how long we got left? Oh, we got two minutes. Bayfeather, Mark, can you ask Kim how she's doing when she comes back? Kim, how are you doing? I'm great. She's all right. <laughs> uh, and then Hal, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I don't like that. Would, would Mark do a, yes. a Space Odyssey reference? No. Mm. No. <clears throat> Thanks very much for all your donations so far. We will read out more at the end. So if you got some donos, you got a question, you want to say hi, get it in for the end of the stream. Yeah. No, don't do that. <laughs> You're making crumbs. He's always making crummies. <laughs> crummies. Mm. I don't like that at all. Mm, crummies. <laughs> Can I just say I can't believe that Praxis Bard thing worked. <laughs> you, can say, you can say what you want. Just because I'm so conditioned to you as well, just being like, it worked. Wait, no, it doesn't. Like, just like messing with our Yeah, emotions. it just worked. Well, that's because it did work. I hate you did, you did what worked. I wrote in my notes to make the door open. I don't like it when we do stuff right. I do. It well, was weird. Don't worry, because now we're back, you have a chance to do lots of things wrong. So, you are currently in what appears to be some sort of officer's quarters on Aegis Five. Mm. An astral citadel in astral space above Aroes. Ass. Astral space. <laughs> Ass. Astral. Um, um, can I please cast Comprehend Languages on myself and stare at this computer screen? Yes. You stare at the screen. Um, very similar to the slate, it is, uh, appears to be made from the same kind of crystal. 
and with your previous Arcana check and the Comprehend Languages, you can tell that it is, yeah, it uses a system of the spell Illusory Script to write code and store messages on some sort of network of, of magic. Mm -hmm. And then you can call up those messages, you can send them to other people. Um, email. Email, because it's illusory. Ah. It's illusory. Oh, oh very nice. Email. Um, uh, <laughs> there are three messages on this terminal that anyone can access. There are also two messages that cannot be accessed by yourself currently. It, some needs some sort of a authorization. Praxis <laughs> Doesn't work. Um, can I look at the three uh, general messages? Yeah, I'm not going to read them out fully because I didn't write them, but I can tell you that one is basically information regarding an upcoming deployment to Erois. An attack on a place called Golden Fields, a food source location, a food source location in the southern central part of the continent, um, and it's just generally be prepared. 0800, like you know, 0800 will will assemble in the docking bays. Oh, I thought it was a phone number. <laughs> no, um, that kind of thing. The second note is a notice regarding punishments for stealing rations, um, and from the sounds of it, the punishments are quite severe. Um, and there is a notice about. The only thing keeping us, um, you know, order and, and uh, law is what keeps us civilized. Um, Was that message sent by Starbane himself? No. It's like, guys, come on! Stop stealing! Stop stealing food! We're trying to take over a Rois. <laughs> no, it was not sent by Starbane himself. It was a general message, ship wide, uh, citadel wide. It's like going into Fallout terminals yeah. and seeing some lore. Yeah, mm. that's basically mm. what it is. I love that. Uh, the lore. last last one is probably the one of most interest. Oh, really? It um, appears to be something uh, it, almost like um, a circulated, not quite newspaper, but bulletin. And it uh, appears to be news from the front. Uh, it just says news from the front. You don't know what the front is. Uh, the 27th Fleet oh. has succeeded in stemming the Hadar Spawn Tide and evacuating Gildlan and Landor. The Eladrin courts have sworn fealty to Emperor Callus and joined the Starbane Empire. Can you repeat the name Gildlan? Gildlan and Landor. Landor. The Eladrin courts have sworn fealty to Emperor Callus and joined the Starbane Empire. Is there a date on this? No. These messages? No. Nope. Sworn. I imagine even if there was, it would be a different date structure to Arose. Mm. Um, XY5 92. <laughs> Star date it means 52 nothing. 42. Captain's log. Um, I have Captain's log. <laughs> I just made a captain's log. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Lucius, can, can you? So, if I just tap the messages, the the like mm -hmm. the two, um, nothing. Yeah. And then no message comes up saying like, nope. okay. Just like you can't access them. It, um, uh, uh, Lucius, do, do you want to press your crystal or hold the crystal and touch or something or just boop the crystal on the screen? I just the wanna... gauntlet. No, the, the necklace you're wearing. Oh! Yes, I can do. Yeah. You try? Nothing doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Whatever authorization it appears to yeah, still still not be met. <sighs> There's two messages on here that clearly need a higher authorization. I, I don't know what... I tried whispering Praxis to it, didn't work. Well, there's other rooms. We, can, we might be able to find a, a more stuff like these clothings. I, I feel yeah. like... This room is an officer room, right? But not like mm -hmm. top members. Top men! Like elite. Well, officers are pretty elite, aren't they? They're up there. Mm. Yeah. A Ayla, out of curiosity, do you recognize huh? any of these names? Guildland, Landor, nope. El El Elar Elarin? Nope. Hmm. Yeah, no, just, no. Doesn't. Doesn't ring any bells. Um, not like the, the name of this place. The name of this place, I, it was a faint memory, but. Like a weird half remembered thing. I don't know. I don't even know where I've heard it before. Well, this space station's been here since the Sundering. So it's before your time. It's not a space station, it's an astral citadel. This astral citadel. Citadel. <laughs> I said it the first time though. Um, the, 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 I did, I said station and I was like, fuck, I should have said citadel. Ayla, could you, could you whisper Praxis Vard to this screen for me? Praxis Vard doesn't work. This is how you torment Kim, by the way. You put something and then don't let her know what it is and it will bother her forever. Ayla, could you touch this screen for me? Touch. Nothing. Mm. Um, 
I mean, I could find out what the, the, the gem that Lucius has is, I suppose. Ten minutes. Cast and identify. Wow. Um, yeah, you cast identify on it. Um, it's not per se a magic item. Um, it has a very minor enchantment, which is basically it just registers the person wearing it as having access right. to certain things. It, it's like a part. It's like a key. Mm. Um, it functions in a similar manner to a key um, that would allow access to certain regions, or certain doors, or areas on the right. astral citadel. If I put it on and then touch the thing, does anything happen? No, okay. no change. Um, if Ayla puts it on. Ayla puts it on, touches it, nothing changes. Okay, well, it's not that. Does anyone want this saber? Anyone need a saber? Uh, it would go with the look. Yeah, you can take it. Can I know I? how to use one. It mm -hmm. could be used for backup for when I run out of spellies. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. In this circumstance. It's just a long sword for the time being. I will write up some fancy stuff for it. Do I have a... a Scabbard. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like a like uh, it, you hang it around your neck and then it clips on as a belt as well. So it's it's like a military like officer's saber. It's like a cavalry saber. Very fancy. It's, um, it actually is kind of suits Lucius in a weird way, like his form and his posture. This kind of elegant cavalry saber kind of suits him. And I go out on the stand on the dining table, <laughs> and do some practices. Okay, just do some. Practice swipes. It's been like, a long time. Like fencing. Yeah, I think like this probably would have gone back to when you were training for sky jousting and things like that. Like you would have had some lessons in swordsmanship that Daddy probably would have paid for. Um, and you weren't awful at them. You just it wasn't your kind of thing. Yeah, I stabbed myself. <laughs> I just hit it. Help! <laughs> I did it wrong. <laughs> Um, how, how much of air breathing time do we have left? Or water breathing, sorry. So you used uh, eight hours, so you have about ten hours left. Ten hours left, cool. Don't worry though, I've got water breathing. Yeah. yeah. I can <laughs> Nova can live here forever. What does it count as? A long sword or a short sword? A uh, long sword. Okay. Sick. So it's a strength based weapon, unfortunately. Yeah, I can cast water breathing. Okay, I'm cool. Just, actually, your strength's not bad. Right. Nice. You got plus one on you. Cool. All right, so what's the plan? Um, so uh, the corridor continues um, the curving round in a ring. Okay. Um, you also notice, by the way, that like when you pass the, the previous hall and if you leave this room, um, there are connection corridors on like all four uh, axes. So leading into the central chamber, there are like four uh, Oh, there's corridors. another... In yeah, from like the sides, yeah, exactly. And then one from the bottom. I guess, yeah, should we carry on going down the corridor? Yeah, let's go south. Going? You pretty much go all the way round because the officer's quarters is pretty much at the southern end. It's almost opposite oh. the portal room. Yeah. Sure. Um, you continue making your way around. There is one more door on the, uh, I would say, southwest, so kind of diagonal, um, that when you pass it, it's open. Uh, the door again has been opened. Um, this one looks like the door has been removed from its frame. The crystal walls, oh. the door, but methodically, not pulled out, right. methodically removed. Okay. Um, and you begin to hear the first noise oh. that you've heard on the station. Not much, but the occasional clang of metal um, and then a kind of faint hissing sound, like a high pressured tss, um, as you begin getting closer and closer. Maybe as you hear like rhythmic. a ting, 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 ting. Those are the noises you hear. <laughs> it's pretty detailed. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for just a. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Wil Wilhelm. No, there's no no sounds of human speech or conversation or noises or reactions. Right. In your robot. Have we noticed a pattern to it, or is it just different kinds of sounds? Very similar sounds, but in a regular pattern, right? Like moving around, doing different things, but okay. all very similar noises. Mm. There could be something down there. Something's, you know. The sense is a tingling. Good. It's oh. weird that there's nothing else here. I don't yeah. like it. Uh, I mean... I, I can cast invisibility and go in. If you want to take... Or it. you could send Echo in? Mm. You send Echo in? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Summon yeah. Echo. Yeah. This is his little uh, scout form, his little ghost form. <laughs> and this little uh, ball of uh, metal brambles with a little purple crystal. Uh, there was a comment about Echo being destroyed. But Sentry has the ability to repair okay, it, and it costs yeah. like yeah. 10 gold. That so. was me 
Fill in that gap. But they, <laughs> so, so it was destroyed in the bomb in Nani No Fear's thing, but I figured we had enough time because yeah. we had a lot of downtime. You had a lot of downtime, and it costs like 10 gold to repair yeah. Echo. He doesn't take a lot to repair. Put the comment. I don't care. It's um, just been privileged. Sentry, you focus and you send Echo in, his little form kind of bobbing through the station. And as he peers in, Echo sees um, this room has been ransacked, but methodically so. Right. Parts of it have been pulled out, um, sections have been cut away, um, and you can see a few tools have been left lying around. There is a kind of puddle of blue glue, goo or like liquid glowing. But in the middle of it all, there is a small, blocky, squared figure, um, a little construct, oh. and he has like a little arm with a kind of high-powered like little um, torch almost, like a, like a lit like piece of hot metal, um, and then his other arm is like a big clamp, and he's just and he's just cutting piece of, pieces of the room apart. There's like a metal structure that was once in there, and it just appears to be disassembling it, and just okay. throwing it on the ground. Oh. Okay, I will send Echo back. Um, and it sees Echo, it kind of turns oh. and looks, because Echo wasn't stealthing, yeah. it just is like... Hmm? and goes back to what it was doing. Oh. It's just like, seems to be working. So there's a structure in the middle that he's disassembling. Not the most of it's gone, most stuff. of it's gone. It's now like a frame of something that used to be there and he's now just, this little robot, this little construct is, is cutting apart the frame itself. Okay. Mm. okay. And just, just, like, just throwing it on the ground. Okay. As right. if that's not its job. Its job isn't to, to clean it, it's just to dismantle it. Yeah. Cool, I'll bring him back and I'll uh, just let the guys know. There's a, um, there's a little construct down there. He's uh, just methodically just tearing the place apart, just bit by bit. Uh, okay. And clearly, and uh, as to, uh, to make it clear, whatever was in that room would have been quite detailed and expansive. It's not there. It's all that's left in the room are like pieces of broken metal, some tools. Everything else has clearly been taken away somewhere. Okay. Whatever was in there is long gone. Your past eye is gone, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean... Seven days. Yeah. It's seven days from last use, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, I seven days from the, the when you spend the last charge. Yeah. So seven days from the end, which you did the other day, which you did eight hours ago. <coughs> yeah, I think so this thing time. is harmless, right? It didn't react aggressively to Echo. Would it's it just, it's got a job and it's doing it. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't react aggressively to anyone else? Uh, I mean, I'll go down in this outfit. How about that? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So Lucius, you just walk into the room. You see the same thing. Um, hmm. The robot does kind of turn and then just goes back to what it was doing. Uh, construct. Doesn't seem to respond. Uh, hello? Doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't react. Starbane. Just... I'm gonna walk in front of it so it can see me. Okay, it kind of looks at you. Hello. Um, and then it, it see whatever it was working on is behind you. So it moves to the side moves to the side, moves around you, and then awkwardly tries to get to what it was doing before. Is it okay. moving like an awkward Roomba? It's moving like a very rigid construct. Like it's not yeah. an organic movement, like a guardian or anything like that, or a golem even. This thing is like, step, step, step. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> new orders, cease your current work. Starbane. Um. Doesn't 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 react. Go Starbane. Okay, I, I okay. I, I guess we've all. <laughs> you can hear Lucius calling this from the other room. If you all stick your head in, this thing doesn't doesn't seem to attack you. The the, the thing it's deconstructing. There's nothing there now. But like, how fast it's working, and how much crap is on the floor. Like, yeah. how long has it been here? Is there any way of telling? Make an intelligence check for me. Okay. Just D twenty plus intelligence. Uh, plus intelligence. 16? 16. Mm, not bad. You can't, you can't like rebuild the scene of what was there well, before. No, I'm just trying to figure out. But how you're kind of be. looking at like the speed at which it's, or what it's working, looking around. It's maybe been doing this for like a couple of, um, maybe like a week or like a week and a bit. Um, okay. And you get the sense that it probably didn't work alone. That that you can kind of see tracks around with your perception. You can see that there are other kind of like footprints, drag marks. Um, it just seems to be the only one left. It just seems to be, and, and even like the frame itself, 
what it's taking apart is pointless. It's taking like scaffolding apart. Mm. It, it, whatever important <laughs> stuff was in here is long gone. And it just seems to be stuck like, I must, I must take this apart. And it's just, you know, working on orders as if it's like stuck on its last order or something. Yeah. Are there any like bits of paper or slate that is literally just like... Wipe clean. Yeah. Looks like everything of value was taken out of the room. Well, um, back up. I guess so. We might be able to use this little guy if there's something that's blocking the way. It might just deconstruct it for us. Um, yeah. Do you want to try mean, and pull him with us? No, he but... Might just go back to this room. Probably, yeah. Eh. We can try. Well, I mean, we'll leave it here for now. Okay. Um, and you want to finish off the ring, go around, complete the circuit? Yeah, so I guess we're now at the portal room. Uh, well, there's one more room, actually. So from oh. the um, from this junk, or the, the robot room, we'll call it, if you carry on around the curve around the outside, there is one more closed door. Um, but you do probably recognize that there is a... No, I don't think you guys would recognize it. There's a, like a, there's a strange symbol on the wall, on the door, kind of painted on the door itself. But I think that you're all smart enough, or like certainly Nova and Quill and, and probably Sentry, you get the sense that it's like a medical symbol. Like maybe it implies like a doctor or an alchemist or an apothecary triage. or something like that, a triage center maybe. Yeah. Um, but the door is closed. But if you mm. send Ayla or Lucius, it will probably open. Oh, Lucius is opening doors now as well. Yeah, with the crystal. Thoughts will respond. Um, if you look, do you, do you open it? Uh, or just going to carry on? Yeah, I, yeah. Shall we? Yeah. There could be some supplies. Yeah. 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 Worth looking. You open it up. Uh, it leads into an octagonal room. Um, clean white Eight. walls. Uh, four glass chambers are built into the four opposing walls to the entryway. Uh, the door is uh, the door is locked, but it's been opened. Um, there is there is an instant smell as you step inside, and your eyes are immediately drawn to what appears to be a slaughtered Sohogan. The throat has been completely and neatly cut um, directly along the throat. Uh, it appears to be one of the priestesses, and she appeared to have been looking towards these four glass tanks that are built into the walls. Tanks? Yes, and as you look at the tanks, you can see that in three of them, there are Sahogan in different stages of growth. Um, so you can see in one, it's like a, like a small hatchling Sahogan. The next, it appears to be maybe an adolescent. And then in the, last, in the third one, and then the last one is empty, the, the last one, it appears to be a grown, powerful, muscular-looking Sahogan. Um, there are blinking lights and kind of little flashes of symbols on some of these devices. Um, and then there's the dead priestess lying on the floor, blood does, pooled. Does she look like her name might be Shantani? You don't know. That looks like a Shantani. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Um, are there any tracks or trails around the fourth empty tube? No. Okay. In fact, it doesn't look open. Ayla goes very quiet when she sees these, these glass tanks. Um, mm. the, uh, the, the third one, the really muscular one, does it look more powerful than the ones we saw. You think it might be similar to the ones that used the like the rifle and stuff like that before, oh, like true. these more advanced elite warriors. But not abnormal. No, not, not like the Mero or the necromatic one, no. Okay. Can, can I gently search the body of the Sahogan? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't actually find anything on her. Like she appears to be like all the other Sahogan. No no yeah. items or anything like that. Loot the room. Uh, can I well, see if this? But I'd say Nova, like with your knowledge of magic and being a bit more of like the Magitech expert, you think that these tanks, like they have power, but whatever systems were supporting life, you think the the three Sahogan in the tanks are dead. Like you think that like their support has been shut off. There's no air. You don't you don't see them breathing. Um, Quill, with your perception, like they're they're not moving. They're not breathing. They're they're dead. Whatever mm. is in those tanks. That's so cool. Um, but um, you just see, like, Ayla kind of moves towards the empty one and kind of, like, runs her hand along, like, the, the like, inside of it, where there's, like, a faint, very faint kind of patterning. Oh, it is open? Yeah. Um, Not smashed open, just open. Just opened. Ayla, are you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird, going? right? 
This is weird. Yeah, it is, it is strange. She kind of looks, looks at the top of the tube and looks down at the bottom. Seems to be really perturbed. Kind of kicks it. Well, and then kind of backs off a little bit. And then just turns to the rest of you like, yeah, this place is weird. Well, uh, what are we doing again? I, I mean, I haven't seen anything like this. Uh, yeah. What a, I mean, do you recognize this? <laughs> I haven't seen anything like this. Have you? Have you, <laughs> per chance? And she's like, oh, I don't know, my head hurts. I keep getting these like weird flashes what of was, stuff. What was the flash this time? I don't know, like this pattern. And she like points at this kind of like white patterning on the inside of the tube. Like, I, I, it's like I've seen it before. Um, it's like I've, I, like I've been inside one of these things. I like, like glass and somebody looking at me from, from where I am now. Ah, it's weird. But I know I've not been, like, I don't know anything about this stuff. Like, there's no way I've been here. Mm. Okay. Were you experimented on? No. I literally, I, I grew up in, in Aroes, in, in the woods, in the forests. How <laughs> far back do you remember that? Yeah, what age? Like, like, since I was a little kid, I don't know, like, little kid. What's your youngest memory? I know, what's your youngest memory? Stealing out of bed at night to read my sister's books. Like, mine was probably, like, I don't know, wanting beer, and I was tiny, and they wouldn't give it to me. Beer? Yeah. Pretty wild, Elsie. Yeah. That could be a, a youngest man. That could be like one. It probably <laughs> was something like that. Yeah, or like, I don't know, little. I was really little. I've never been somewhere like this. It's weird. But also, it's not like, I don't know, it's like I was an adult when I was, the memory of me being in here, it, it was like I was big, I don't know, like, uh, it's like I was in there now. That's something's, there is corruption here. It could be just affecting you. Yeah, I think it is. It must be. Portent. I forgot to do that. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, four and a seventeen. Okay. They're usable. Okay. Nice a good and a bad. Hmm. Uh, look, look, don't worry about it. Let's just move on. Like, uh, I don't like all this stuff. I just want to get out of here now. Let's go find stuff to break and okay. then get out. Is, is there anything like I can read in the room? Like, I mean, there's nothing. Uh, there's a bit to be. Yeah. And I guess nothing by way of supplies. Um, there are. I mean, you don't see anything, which is strange because if this is some sort of like medical center, you don't see like any surgical tools. You don't see any bandages. Um, the walls do look like they're paneled, mm. but you don't see any immediate like containers or anything like that. How recently? C could you tell how recently the Silhogan's been killed? If you make a medicine check, yeah. Dice. <laughs> That's how you play the game. That'll be a two. No idea. Um, you kind of get down and it's kind of smelly and there's a lot of blood and you're just like, no, 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 no. I guess okay. the blood dry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. blood is dry. Um, okay, well, I mean, we've done an entire cycle of this. I suppose it's just the darkened chamber in the middle and then either up or down, yeah. or left, right. Which direction is that one? Because I mean, I know the direction if we were down there, on a row is. Yeah. Anyway, we'll go that one. Yeah. The one that's... I guess. Into, but that's a dark chamber, I guess, towards the music. In the dark, spooky chamber of mystery. Okay. With a door that's been forced open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one. That one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. I guess we'll head back to. Sure. Oh, you actually, head your could, way back. could we go? You can go down, sideways. Yeah. You can. Could we you, go down like a different corridor and just see? Leads to the exact same place. The and exact same place. The doors but... are pried open as well. Uh, actually, on this side they're not. No, the doors are only pried open on the one facing the portal. But the doors on this one open as soon as Ada or Lucius approach them. Okay. When they do open, you see, moving to the edge. <laughs> You see that there. This is an impo like not impossibly long. Maybe you think about four hundred foot deep cylinder, like a black cylinder. Like you're peering down a black chasm yeah. that just, and then at the bottom, it just breaks away and leads out into the debris field and the stars and the endless astral space. Um, you can see floating that whatever lower part of this astral citadel was there is now free-floating in the same orbit, but it's separated. It's completely broken off. Um, up? Down. Is that what's up? 
uh, up, you look up, um, there's maybe a little bit of um, open space. You think maybe there's another door up, but it's closed. And there also doesn't appear to be a way to access it. Whereas where you are currently, someone or something has made very crude stairs that cycle this cylinder, like a spiral going down. They're very crude at parts. It looks, it's very narrow as if somebody's just literally wedged like sheets of metal into the wall and then secured it in place. The, the, the door we just opened, mm. was that opened by Lucius or Ayla? Um, whichever you prefer. So it doesn't matter? Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, there is buttons, there's like crystal buttons. You press them, nothing happens. Um, there are like rivets along the side of the cylinder, almost like grooves where something maybe you would once have like slid up and down, but there doesn't appear to be anything there now. Just a crude staircase leading down. Um, and you can see as you look down, there are other doors. As you look down, there are like doors built into the sides of the cylinder that would appear to lead into right. other rooms. Which is what the staircase is for, I assume. But the lower ring. This, the stairs definitely doesn't match like the rest of the way the, this place has been built. It looks like metal has been salvaged and then, yeah, literally used to build a jury rig staircase. The rest of this citadel is immaculate and incredibly well built. Um, okay. It looks hastily built as well. This is post. Probably whoever owns the construct or is working with the construct. Yeah. Or the Sahagin. Maybe or like salvagers or something like this. Could be. You don't know. But yeah, you see that it's... Um, the main thing you know, and this would be Tiangon and Helios would be able to communicate this, the Dark Eterna is coming from a room about 200 feet down. It's not all the way down, it's about halfway down this cylinder. There is Accessible. a, there is a yeah. room, and you can see Quill, probably the only one who can, peering down, because it's pitch black. There is an opening, and there is a soft light coming from a doorway about 200 feet down. There are also, there's also one other door that's open on the way down. Is, is there a, where the staircase stops, is it basically that room? Yes. Okay. Looks like it's been built from here to that room. Now what? Try to oh, get no, it. There's a door up, isn't there? Yeah, closed, and there doesn't appear to be any easy way to access it. There's no stairs or anything like that. What if someone wants to levitate? You, you could definitely go up to it, but it is closed. Mm. I think we've come this far, and that's pretty far. And we can just go back. It's the furthest, I yeah. think. Yeah, I think, I think we've done pretty well. We'll ever be able to go. That's a record, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Good job. Well done. And, um, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go up there. Uh, point up. Sure. Uh, I mean, okay. Um, it's the opposite way to... Yeah, sure. What do you think's up there? Well, Helios and um, Tiangong say that the Eterna is down, but I want to see what is up. Yeah, sure. I'm fine, thank you. What's I up, didn't dog? say dog. I didn't <laughs> say dog. What's Don't up? push What's it. Up? Okay. I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, if, if if the door opens, you you could just use. Presumably, yeah. I just need sure. a crystal. Okay. Put it on. So you Nova. cast levitate, and then what? Like push yourself off the wall, and then float up to that that bit. Um, yeah, you do notice as soon as you step out, the gravity is a little bit lighter in this cylinder. Um, whatever artificial gravity is in the, the rings is not as strong in this main cylinder. So even without the levitation, you kind of not float, but your movements have a bit more sort of like you can jump a bit further, you can push yourself a bit further, um, you feel a bit lighter on your feet. You float up and the door, it opens, but it struggles to. When you get to that top door, it kind of struggles and you kind of have to kind of tug on it a few times to help like maneuver into place. But when it does open, it seems to lead out onto a curved, at best you could describe it, not like workshop, but you see banks of rows of desk with these kind of crystal slates embedded into them. And rather than being metal shutters, there appears to be a great translucent glass window that just covers this curved front of this whole room and it stares out onto the debris field onto Erois itself. A few of the little crystal tablets blink and flash with lights and at the very center there appears to be a large chair um, that kind of yes. faces onto the, the main thing itself, onto the large window. Okay. Um, I'm gonna call down. Um, it seems to be some kind of command center, a, a bridge or something. Command center is probably um, yeah, the most likely. 
I, there's nothing here. Uh, I guess that's... Actually, no, I'd probably I'd do it in the messenger, messenger room. room yeah. yeah. I guess that's the sort of place we'd want to look through. The music coming from down below cuts off, like whatever song was previously playing, and this really happy, joyful, really upbeat melody. Like it's kind of got like a bit of a, a bit of a dance to it, and it's kind of like Damn. playing. Yeah, and it and it <laughs> begins echoing up, um, and it sounds happy. Uh, there's no lyrics for this song. It's just kind of like this kind of just happy beat um, that's like coming all the way. And it up plays as soon as Nova goes into that room. When she comes out and begins speaking with you, it, then it happens. Oh. Creepy. Wait, did you talk about the using the Yeah, she, yeah uh, she did, yeah. Just making sure. Is there anything up there worth looking at or taking? Uh, there's, there's the usual tablet. The I mean, you've not sorry, stepped into the room sorry, much yeah, further. I, so. I haven't gone in fully, but there seems to be the usual, the crystal slates. The, there's a big chair here and a, and a window. Um, stepping out onto the staircase. Mm -hmm. uh, you said the gravity was lighter. Mm -hmm. Can I do a test jump? Yeah, you can jump. It, it, not much. Like you jump and maybe it gives you like an extra like couple of like half a foot or something like oh, that. You're okay. like, you just feel that you feel lighter here. Like you can kind of feel that it has less of a grip on you. Yeah, okay, so not like half. You still think really. that if you fall. <sighs> yeah. And you'll just go out the bottom mm -hmm. of this cylinder. Cool, 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 no cool, want, cool, 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 no cool, 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 cool. Are you content up there? Then do you want can, to I, can I have a quick look at the, the nearest... Uh, no, he's giving me that look. <laughs> yeah. Nearest what? The nearest screen, like crystal tablet slate. Yeah, they're flickering. They don't seem to be reading out much. I think that... Um, Strange, you can almost see like um, maybe there's like maps, kind of like maps, almost like ASCII maps, right? They're made out of like symbols and code, but they're still, you know, so they can be shared amongst these tablets, these crystal devices. Um, there's almost like an ASCII map of a, co a continent, which historically is what Erois is represented as. Mm -hmm. And you can see that there are a couple of locations marked and things like that. Um, scanning the rest of the console, you can see that there are a few kind of like elevated crystals with writing underneath them that seem to indicate different things. Um, they're actually written probably in common, actually, the, the labelings. Um, one reads um, like shielding, one reads uh, docking bay. There is also one called ILS. Um, but yeah, They're right now, and they are glowing. You think that you could probably depress them and it would do something. Um. <laughs> what? I'm just like, I don't want to press a button. Which button do I want to press? Sure. How much are you uh, telling us about all this, by the way? <laughs> I'll probably, I would probably have a running comment okay. in my brain. Okay. Um. I'll just say, be careful, Nova. If there's anything, remember, just, just come straight back down. Yes, any of those buttons could stop this whole thing from working. I mean, Lucia says that, but clearly one is shielding, docking bay, and ILS. You don't think any of them represent, like, power systems or anything like that. It did say something about the docking bay earlier. Mm -hmm. Can I press the crystal for the docking bay? Yeah, you press it, you do hear, like, a faint hum. Nothing happens, though. I think that's probably where my courage is going to run out, okay. and I'll come back. Okay. Yeah. Do we head down to yeah. old? Crack? Well, there is there is one door on the way down. You can see that there are closed doors which you can open if you want as you make your way down. Um, but there is one open door between you and the Eterna room. How many? Uh, um, in terms of doorways. So if you imagine like a central spire. So you're on the upper ring, I will confirm now. So going down, there is one, two, three, four, five doors. There's five doors between you and the power core, which is the Eterna room. Um, and the one in the very middle, so like the, the third room is open. The others are all closed. Okay. And the stairs do connect them. The stairs only really connect that third room and the Eterna room. The others are like on opposite sides of where the stairs are and stuff like that. It doesn't look like they've been right, open. Right, okay. So three and five. Yeah. The other ones don't connect. Yeah. Yeah. And your levitate lasts for like a minute, right, Nova? Uh, 10. 
10 minutes. Okay, so you can still just go up and down as you need to. So you're pretty safe from falling. Is it worth you checking out that open room while you still have this ability? Uh, the, the open the, one is the one we can get On the to, way down, it? on yeah. the stairs? If you guys want to start making your way down, because it's going to take you some time. Like, walking down, it will take you, like, you know, a couple of minutes or whatever it is. Yeah. If you're moving at 30 feet around, like, 200 feet. I'll be careful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the stairs are there and you're not under any threat, so I'm not going to have you guys make any athletics checks. Um, even if, some of the times you kind of have to do a little bit of a jump between them, but whilst you're not under any kind of, like, combat threat, like, you can help each other and Sentry can kind of hold our hands out and grab you and Nova can levitate people up and down. So I'm not going to make you do any checks. The main thing is, when you come to the middle room, the one that's open, you can see it leads into a very dark room um, that seems to be mostly empty. You can see there are these huge metal coils that go from ceiling to floor. Um, and in the middle, there appears to be this, um, like, a flat metal disc and there appears to be kind of crystals embedded into the ceiling. Um, but that's all you can see from here. If anybody steps in further, you might be able to see more details because it kind of, the room spreads out and you can only see what's directly in front of the doorway. Do you want me to send Echo through? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you so send Echo Echo's good in. for, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's exactly what he's there for. You have Echo scouts through and you can see that the rest of the room seems to be occupied by at best, you would describe them as you saw them in the Rosewater Lake ship. They're almost like, um, they seem to be storing some sort of violet energy. They, they almost seem to glow with power, and they seem to be connected to the central disk. Um, you do notice that written on the side of uh, uh, the, the room at the back, um, there is just the letters ILS in big mm. uh, writing. And that's the top door. First door. Uh, the, the middle the middle door, sorry. Oh, right, okay. I thought you were checking out the open door, yeah. ILS. ILS. Um, nice. And there is, a, I'd say that there's probably some sort of like, um, no, no, there wouldn't be any sort of like console or anything in here actually. Cool. Okie dokie, so. I'll let the guys know. Any idea yeah. what an ILS is? Incredibly well, lovely scenery. It I just projects lovely scenery that's incredible. Then we guess we Could better be. press that button. <laughs> I, I, uh, is it interstellar light speed? I, d the, the, I, I saw a button for it up in the command room. Is it to open and close that door? Is it because you pressed the button? I didn't Did you press push that button? button. I pressed the docking bay button. Right. Well, pushing Good. buttons, do, it, does it... I mean, you're all just stood outside the room at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you can push do you want to keep want. going or do you want to go inside? What do you want to do? Or are you just going to stand outside? I mean, we don't know what an ILS is. No. Light, life. Unless someone stays here and then you go back up and press the button. Mm. But then, what if it explodes? What if it doesn't explode? What if it's loot? Well, Interstellar we... loot system. <laughs> Incredible loot. Loot system. You press it and just coloured guns spill out of <laughs> space. Oh, like I got a gold! <laughs> it's that hair clip thing again. Wow. <laughs> um, I mean, if we find a docking bay and see what happened, because I pressed that, but the docking bay might be blown oh, up might. because of that message. Could be yeah. the whole bottom ring, yes. Yeah. Life support? Uh, oh, uh, oh, in that case, yeah, let's not touch that. I don't know what the I would stand for there. Incredible life support. Impossible? In... Integral? Integral. In... Isn't life support always important. integral? Yeah, I mean, that is important. It's it important. important. It's uh, impartial life support. In I would say, eternal? Kim, you would know, Nova would know, um, it didn't seem to be active. When you looked at the console at the top, because I didn't expect you guys up there, when you looked at it, it wasn't, looking at the button, you didn't get any sense it was active. It looks like it was like, press to activate, whatever the ILS is. Okay, like, the same so with the docking bay, like, up. probably was like some sort of like, open cargo bay doors kind of vibe. Same with the shielding, you don't sense that there's any shielding active. Mm. But I mean, we're, we're, we're alive now. Yeah. So let's go down to the music where the Eterna is. And then maybe after that, we can start tinkering with things. I'm going to hold you to that, I promise. I mean, assuming, you know, it's not the worst down there. Well, I'm, probably I'm, is. I'm assuming yeah. the worst. Yeah. OK, good. Me too. So you can make your way down. Yeah. Music gets louder and louder. It's this joyful, energetic beat, kind of dun, bum, 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 bum. like it, it sounds strange to you guys, like having never heard music before, there's there's synthetic sounds 
there's beeps and whistles and and all sorts of strange noise. Never heard colored music light. like this, you mean? Yeah, okay. colored colored light seems to be kind of coming from the doorways at the bottom. Oh, it's dubstep. Um, and then it kind of softly stops just before you reach it, and that kind of beautiful choir music begins playing up again. Um, and you see that the stairs eventually reach to a little platform, and then it goes directly into the room itself. Did it seem like it was directly tied to where we were? Like, if we started going back up again? It didn't seem to be, but okay. maybe. Mm, okay. Um, right. Room. Right. Music. Are we prepared for this? No. What do we even do? I don't know. I mean, we haven't seen anything, or any people at least. Well, just Other one very dead Sir Yeah. yeah. Helios, what's the best way to uh, stop the pain of this corrupted Eterna? And destroy it. In, in what fashion? Uh, you will need magic. Weapons would probably not would not be effective against another Eterna. You will need magical energy, ideally non-elemental in nature, if possible. Uh, but elemental damage can still harm my kind. Um, Let's all prepare that then. Make sure we have elemental abilities, spells, attuned weapons. Yeah, okay. Um, sure. Okay. Okay. I mean... Are you making your way down? I'll, I'll, Do we want to send in our scout? I'll cast a shield of faith on Lucius before we go in. So you've got plus two AC. Grats. Thank you. Nice. Uh, for ten minutes. So Here hopefully it doesn't take us longer than ten minutes to get in there. Here we go. Okay. He's right. got a map okay. out. I've got a map out. We might need to adjust it as I do. Right. Sure. There we go. Should I send Echo ahead again? Um, yeah. Ooh, your miniatures are all in the cupboard. Hang on, I'm going to go grab them. Okie dokie. Uh, is there any other prep we can do? <laughs> I can... Uh, you've got spells or potions that you want to take. Take them now. Send a message to Araya. I mean, it, again, like three five percent chance of it working. No, it's a five percent chance it fails. I think. Yeah. Oh. Other way around. Uh, do I have sending prepared? Oh my god. <laughs> I don't. Sid has uh, just sent a message to us, going, "Start crying." Oh, I mean, yeah, I am already. Yeah. Inside, I've always been crying. Uh, I've been crying this whole session. I'm just gonna pop you guys here, and then you can decide where you are. I do. Can I stairs? Yes. Can I and that, as, as it seems, that platform is kind of broken. It looks quite rickety. Oh, lordy. There we go. Can I retroactively prepare sending, as if I did it during my long rest? I sure. Was, I was meant to. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, you said you wanted to do that, so... Um, cool. So there is a... Oh yeah, only 5% chance it doesn't arrive. But I mean, I've rolled pretty good with percentile dice before. Still worth a shot. Um, cool. Sentry, where do you want to be? I'm, um, don't worry about actually placing yourself okay. on the stairs then more there, just to indicate that that's where the entrance is. Um, and then, <coughs> yeah, the what's hole. the plan? Um, so, I think Echo's going in, isn't it? Echo's going in. I, okay. might, want, I might cast, do I might give... Um, oh, what that? Where did no, that come from? 2 AC for he with heroism. Okay, what? Well, I think yeah. uh, Shield of Faith is AC. Oh, Shield of Faith is AC. Oh, yeah, yeah. Heroism is temporary hit points. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nova, you can have plus two AC if you want. Oh, thank you. Okay. We're all it's tanking. Concentration spell, concentration yeah. spell. Yeah. Is, it, got actually, concentration. is it worth casting on Quill or something? Because I've got 17 AC. Uh, no, I've got shield and stuff. Okay. So I've got a decent okay. chunk. Cool. Right. Actually, you've got the barrier ring. Why did I cast it on you? Damn it. <laughs> so, you send, so you're all kind of stacked up on the stairs leading down and you're going to send Echo in, yes? Yeah. Echo sees a large square, pretty empty of any features room. The only thing still remaining in this room that Echo immediately sees is at the far end, there is a kind of sectioned off chamber with a large um, containment unit with a, with a Starbane tech base glass canister around it, inside of which is a silvery axe crackling with black energy. In front of this chamber, kneeling, well not kneeling, but kind of coiled up on a serpentine tail, is a beautiful Piscine-like woman with these long tentacle-like hair strands, um, holding her hands up and singing, almost like in prayer, like a hymn, um, and she's singing to it. You notice that around her, there are these 
dried out husks oh, no. of Sahorgan. Uh, just collapsed on the ground. They look like they've been partially like turned to ash and mm. just melted away and they're just lying on the floor around her and she's just she's like kind of singing um, with a beautiful singing? yeah and you can tell that she's the the music is louder and her voice is being amplified but she's the one that's creating this music and the music is blaring out of nothing okay. um, just out of thin air basically um, and the music is this yeah this melodic happy uh, like ballad okay and what was the pop music? <laughs> That's a good question. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does she have any like weaponry on her that Echo can see? Anything? No. No. She just she's just chilling. Not that Echo can see. Not that Echo can see. He's just chilling, having a good time, yeah. singing a song. Okay, I will send Echo back. Uh, just before Echo comes back. There's this moment where the singing, like, the, the beat continues. Her singing kind of stops. And you see this kind of pie scene, this very humanoid face. She turns. No! Looks directly at Echo. No! Smiles. And just goes back to singing. Oh, no. Okay. Um, Sid is here to fix the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Whipping uh, Echo back immediately. Yeah, Echo comes sailing back and she just turns back. This kind of, like, melodic singing continues. There was a priestess in there, singing to the Eterna. Uh, she's, she's like a snake woman. Okay. Um, she, but she saw Echo, but she didn't. Care. Again, she, she didn't care. She was just singing. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Is this Sakira? I don't know. Not snake woman. She's a snake woman. This is definitely. She was. Her a snake. emblem is a snake. She was a snake. Um, I mean, leave? I we, think we should leave. Uh, should we leave? No. I don't know. If it's like it, I don't know if it's like it, I don't, I don't know. It, it, her her symbol is a snake coiled around a spear. Can we, okay. Can we fight Did that? you see a spear? Uh, the echo, couldn't, echo couldn't see a spear. We can't do this. This is, this is crazy. Like basically, a, this is, I mean, it's like a god, right? Second in command. <laughs> Second in command. Too. Whatever lights were coming from the upper ring upstairs go out. <gasps> Helios, Helios, what what do we do? Helios. There is only one thing you can do. <gasps> this is an opportunity. I think of all the ones that, if this is her, I doubt it is. But if it, even if it is a servant of Zarkira, they killed my people, your people. Yeah. We have to avenge them, Sentry. We Both do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what, what if what, what if I I go in and and talk talk to her as a no. distraction? No, but no, no, I can't. A, but but I can distract. I have her tablet. <laughs> no, but no. Don't. What's that going to do? I, She's also singing to I could a pretend corrupted to <laughs> Be on her side. Nova and Helia and Sentry. As you're kind of standing there having this debate, you feel this. <laughs> A presence, this like alien presence, that connection you have with your own Eterna, it's like something latches onto it, and you just hear this like hunger and feed, must feed. It's not a female, what voice? No. It sounds otherworldly, but it latches that? onto that bond you have with your own Eterna. I think it's the Eterna, the yeah. corrupted one. We have to end this, right? We, we She's should. on her own. It's, yeah. She has the Eterna, the corrupted one. You know what Night Frost was capable of. Yes, but we're capable of, we've got Helios. We've got Helios. He can protect us at least, right? Helios? <sighs> We either, live, we either do what must be done, or we die here as heroes. We're not getting out, so I guess we're going in. Right? I guess so. In, then? Sure. Who's first? Sentry? Ayla, Ayla takes the first step. Oh. I'll go first. I think we should all go. Okay. Let's all go together. <laughs> yep, as one. 
Don't want these echo either. So who you guys can arrange yourselves where you want to go. I'm behind Sentry. As always, forever, forever behind Sentry. Um, so. If I'm next to Sentry, to the right. This way? Then I'll go behind. Either. Yeah. Okay. Echo f hovers over to the side, and you just wait. And you kind of, as you make your way down, you see this this Hagen priestess. No, and she just finishes the last kind of moment of her song, and then falls quiet. And then her body turns to face you. So welcome. Ah, I must admit, I was quite curious what you might do when you entered the station, the Citadel. <laughs> ah, forgive me. I forgot that I'm still wearing this ridiculous disguise. Uh, yep. And her body transforms, revealing something unexpected. Oh, the serpentine-like features, the Sahogin body peels away and is replaced by orange and red and golden light as a beautiful woman in rich reds and orange fabrics like silk draping off her body, delicate little shoes, uh, and, a, and a beautiful headdress kind of rests around her. And you see that she is elven with these bright, just pure gold eyes. Her eyes are pure gold. Um, her, her skin is like caramel and these kind of beautiful silks all arraign around her. And she's just like, I am so happy to see you. You have no idea how boring these Sahorgan have been. I thought I was going to be stationed here forever. Ah, oh, hi. Message, message and ring. Maybe you should fan out. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Move, take, basically, take an action at a time if you want. So if you want to move, five, move to 30 feet. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so which one are you then? <laughs> <laughs> which one am I? Hmm. That's funny. Which one of who? Well, of Starbanes, of I, anything. What? She's like, you know that it's all one big empire, right? Mm -hmm. You Erosians are so funny. You don't know anything. You must have freaked out when you came acro across the Citadel, right? Have you, have you seen where you are? You know, you know you're in space, oh, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Still we're coming we're... to terms with that, yeah. yes. <laughs> They must have freaked you guys out, right? What do you think? I mean, personally, if I may, <laughs> I don't speak for the group. I, I, I've always wanted to be in space. That's so cool. I'm, oh man, I'm so glad you got to see it. Oh, that's really, oh, you've always wanted to see it? Man, it must be so difficult being trapped down on that boring planet of yours. God, you can't go and see anything. You're trapped. It's really sad. Uh, you're, you're singing to a corrupted Eterna. I wasn't singing to it, I was practicing. For? Well, for, for my performances, my concerts. Uh, are these your audience? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's funny. Uh. Do you think I'm like some kind of crazy, you know, sorceress or like, oh, not like one of those uh, Hadar touched, I hope. Had, Hadar touched? Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes, well, mortals, especially people from backwards planets, like you guys, tend to, you know, they get a bit culty with Hadar and they start embracing his dark magic and it causes some weird stuff, but yeah, uh, not like those, no. No, these were, and she gestures like, uh, a necessary sacrifice, sadly. I needed to power up Silver Edge here. And she gestures behind it to the uh, containment unit. To fight Hadar? No, technically, I was a uh, different mission. Not that I'm going to tell you guys what I was here to do. Powering the Sahagin to attack Erois. That was part of it, sure. Yeah, kind of a nice bonus, really. A bonus? Yeah. Mm. Bonus uh, from who? Well, who do you think, Guardian? Callus, the Emperor! Okay, uh, okay. Um, can, can, can I ask her um, name, please? No. Oh, that's really sweet. Sure you can, sweetie. I'm Shansara. Diplomatic core, technically. And she kind of gives you a fake salute and smiles. And uh, you, you were dressing up as Sarkira? Yeah, you know, these Sahogans, they were pretty, pretty stupid before mm. we came along. So 
Ah, uh, well, me and the diplomatic corps thought it might be better if, you know, we kind of played up the whole, ooh, a mysterious priestess brings word from Zarkira angle. Okay. No, I won't lie, you kind of convinced me. I thought that's who oh. we were here to meet. <sighs> you're gonna have to forgive me. I forgot one thing. Uh, ILS, shut the blast doors. The doors behind you. Oh. Intelligent life system or intelligent uh, system? <laughs> what does that stand for, by the way? Illusory leadership system. Okay. Oh, hang on, give me a second. ILS, manif manifest here, please. The air shimmers in front of her. And a form appears. Dark black armor laced with purple. <laughs> long black dark hair. A powerful masculine form. Greetings. Why do you bring me here, Sansara? You do not require my services any longer. They wanted to know what ILS meant. So I had to show them. He's not real, right? I mean... What is real? Who are you? Oh. He isn't real. Uh... Travelers? We're just, um... You are unauthorized to be aboard this citadel. I wish you had not disposed of all of our security forces. We don't need them. I'm going to deal with them. Don't worry. Well, deal with us? How? Oh, yeah, you guys have to die. I'm really sorry. Um. Well, maybe you don't have to die. If you want to join the Empire, maybe I can, you know, you can, we can figure something out that way. But you would probably need to come with me as prisoners to start with. Well, how would you even possibly get us there? This place is ruined. Oh, don't worry about that. I've got my secrets. Your mm. mission makes no sense to me. No, of course it doesn't. You're a stupid Erosian. <laughs> of course it wouldn't make sense. It really doesn't make any sense to you? If Starbane is trying to amass... This is really fun, by the way. It's so great to talk to people that aren't so hogging. If Starbane's trying to amass forces to fight the threat mm -hmm. and use Erois... Mm -hmm. to fight the threat. Mm -hmm. Why is he killing countless <laughs> civilians? He's not, though, Lucius. <laughs> he's, turn he's turning the Triton into monsters for his army. Yes, and also many civilians have died as a result. They're attacking villages. Well, not yet. Some civilians have died, but probably, yes, a lot of civilians are going to have to die. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <sighs> die well, as in a sacrifice, or...? Deep. Well, just because you, you Erosians are so stubborn, you just, you, you just won't give in. Like, you just, you're going to fight Starbane because Siaska told you to, and you're not going to listen to reason. What if Starbane was actually to tell people about Hadar? Uh, would you think that the PPD hasn't tried that before? Well, nobody seems to know about Hadar. I've been telling people about Hadar. Everyone looks at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, let me tell you something. Here's the problem with Eros, Eros right? Siaska instill her beliefs in your world and her titans, uh, what do you call them, your gods. They continue the message, even though they're kind of weak now. And your people just don't want to accept stuff like that. You're kind of stupid. You know, until you see Hadar, nobody really believes in it. Um, but I, I believe. Well, then you should join the Empire. And somebody like you, if you're smart, like, if you can figure things out, there's a place for you, for sure. I mean, we might need to, I don't know, kill a lot of people that you know and take over your planet to do it, but yeah, you should join. What if we could convince the people of Aroes to fight Hadar, that the threat isn't Starbane? Uh, listen, I'll pass it up the chain, but I don't think it's gonna work out. Callus would have already tried that if he was gonna do it. He sent me and many others to, to the planet for a purpose, so... And also, I can't really let you leave now, so... But who says... You already said that nobody's going to listen to Starbane, right? Because he's got a bad reputation. Eh, not just but that. What? It's, it's, you know, the what beliefs of your planet in general. But sure, go on, carry on. Well, what about people like us? Who are you, by the way? Are you anybody important? Well, we have a guardian. Cool. Lucius is a highborn. I think, I, I don't want to say it, but Callus has killed a lot of guardians. I don't think they're very important. Just tighten the grip around my axe handle. She's like, oh, sweetie, please try. Please try. 
I mean, it's gonna happen anyway. So if you want to get the first, if you want to try for the first hit, be my guest. I can't listen to the word you speak. Where are you use. from? Me? Yes. I'm from a little. I'm a little planet far away from here. Were you away. invaded by Starbane, and were your civilians killed and turned into forces to fight Hadar? Of course, my people tried to fight back. They thought he was some sort of invader. But luckily, thankfully for some of my people, eventually after he conquered, you know, the first couple of continents, people started listening. Also, a lot of people like me were kind of sick of the whole Hadar thing, so we basically revolted against our own leaders and joined Kaz's side. But how long did it take for you and your world to give up? Oh, a good, good couple of hundred years. I'm going to messenger ring. Can I mess? It has to be everybody, right? Or can I do individuals? No, nah, it has to be everyone. Can we kill her now, before, while she's still talking? Yeah. Can um, centuries start it? <laughs> I mean, you must have been stupid as well, right? It took mm. you 100 years to give up. Yeah, my people were really stupid. But, I signed up straight away. But you were so intelligent to join. Huh? You were so smart to join. Yeah. And why do you have to kill us? Because you've come here and, I mean, Maybe you're not as stupid as I'm saying. Maybe you figured a couple of things out, and I just don't want to take that risk. I was kind of wrapping up all the loose ends here, and I kind of wasn't expecting any, you know, I guess you're from the surface. I was just expecting to deal with those Tritons and the Sahogans, so I just can't really risk any word getting out of what I was doing. Sorry. <laughs> what, 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 what race are your people? Jeez, 20 questions, but sure, I guess I can answer them. I'm an Eladrin, a summer Eladrin to be specific. Um, I haven't really got any more questions. Oh. Yeah, sorry. She waves her hand and the callus just seems to vanish from her, from, from sight. Sorry, just putting two and two together. You guys swore fealty to Starbane in that report. Well, one of, one of the planets did. Some of the other planets fell long before that. Like I said, some of us were kind of on the up and up and pretty okay with Emperor Callus. I mean, honestly, I, do, I don't know if you've met him, but wow, like you listen to him speak about defeating Hadar and Zakir is just so into the whole galactic tyranny thing. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. They're Toxic so man. incredible. Got a question about the big, the big K. M M the Emperor, yeah. 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 Have you what met his daughter? His daughter? He doesn't have a daughter. Are you sure? Yeah, pretty sure. Well, pretty we, sure uh, that would have been mentioned in diplomatic training. Well, well that's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting that it doesn't come back down to you. Hey, do you know that uh, you have a daughter and I've got a hostage? Yeah, we can make up lies too, by the way. Have you got a communication with him? No, why would I have a communication to him directly now? He's busy. Oh. Busy about to take over your plan. Wait, when was the last time you spoke to him? Recently enough. How, last month, last three weeks. Does it matter? Well. Have you noticed um, Sentry's matrix and what it's made out of? No. It was given to us by Callus. Yeah, well, yeah, he gave me a wedding ring too. Yeah, sure. Oh, man, you guys will try anything not to get killed. While she's talking, Yeah. can I cast Misty Step? Yeah. Caught in front of her? Yeah. And smash it real hard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you absolutely can. Look at the fucking matrix. <laughs> oh, Take my God. Teleport. You swipe goes through it like an illusion. Oh. You hear a kind of like, nice try. And her form reappears in the corner. This is the point we're gonna roll initiative. But yeah, I mean. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Oh, okay. Damn it. I'm sad that we don't have music. Here. What a bitch. We do, <laughs> we just can't hear it. Yeah. Um. I think she's interesting. She's um interesting. I got above 10, Tom. <laughs> On what initiative? Yeah, it doesn't Wait. count, but I got above 10 this time. Wait, you're not going last? No, I'm not going last. No, I don't, well, something's I might not wrong. be going last. It depends. No, that doesn't sound right at all. Are you working for Starbane? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Ayla. I don't think if there's one person working for Starbane here, it's me. <laughs> Fair. Insurgent. Yeah, Novi, you should, you should join forces with her. You get on really well. I was going to talk to her, but these guys are chow boxes. I mean, 
I've been dropping hints this entire time. I thought Aegis V was Visage. <laughs> you like Ad Kalar, that's an anagram. You know what for? Well, Aelis is a hogan, right? I'm... Over as a traitor? <laughs> I super love Starbane. Yeah. It's, uh, I am Hadar. <laughs> <laughs> you like Ad Kalar? I am Hadar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really good. Nice. All the letters are there. Oh my god. No wonder he hates you. Wait a minute, Hadar uh, is in the next... Sentry. <laughs> uh, anagram. 16. Lots of 16s. Uh, Quill. Uh, sorry, I, was, I think I'm Hadar. Um, 13. 13. Nova. 18. Lucius. 21. 21. Big boy. Lucius is in fact the first to go. Um, you would see when she appeared, by the way, um, from after being attacked, because she had the readied action, two drones oh, yeah, that oh, seem right. to hover uh, also appear Aww. next to her. Oh. And weebos. <laughs> weebos? <laughs> from a flubber. <laughs> sure. But they seem to be made of um, Starbane tech and they kind of hover around her. One appears to have some sort of um, sort of like ranged weapon underneath it. The other one seems to have some sort of um, strange magical device. Uh, Lucius. I'm going to cast Elemental Bane on her. Okay. Uh, con save, please, of 14. And if you could fail that, that would be great. Yeah, Cheers, Dan. She, she has magic works. resistance, so she has advantage. Con save, you said, yes. Uh, so that is going to be a 11, and with the advantage, that's a 10, that's a fail. Yeah! Oh. So I'm going to choose cold, mm -hmm. and the first time each turn the affected target takes damage of that chosen type, the target mm -hmm. takes an extra 2d6 damage of that type. Perfect. So if I, and she loses all resistance to that damage type Yikes. until the spell ends. Perfect. Cool, if anyone great. Does cold to her, she can't resist it, and it's an extra 2d6. Super effective. Perfect. Uh, so right. for all our attacks. Anyone that does cold damage. I don't think yep. I have any. Um, anything else, Lucius? Uh, you will die. <laughs> <laughs> you will die now. That's it, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. No. Uh, at the end of your turn, Lucius, she's going to look at you um, and you just. She kind of like hums or like gently sings a soft aria. Can you make a wisdom saving throw? Oh, is she a barb? Uh, 13. 13. You take some psychic damage as her song kind of gets into your brain and you feel it kind of plucking away at your thoughts. You're going to take eight points of psychic damage. Okay. Damn. Duh. It's at Buh. the end of your turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after oh, my brain Lucius, leaving. Nova, what's your dex? Mm, plus three. Okay. She is going to go next. On her turn, she will do the following. Seeing the uh, very angry looking guardian. Fuming. Deal, how much does she want to deal with you? Literally fuming? Literally. There's like smoke. Steam vents. Steam vents coming. <laughs> What's she begins to kind of just dance. Like she begins swaying her arms and kind of stepping to the side and begins singing. Mm -hmm. um, and this kind of tune definitely begins emanating out. I need you, Sentry, to make a... Um, oh. No. In fact, A, uh, you don't make a saving throw. Oh. You just, you can't help your body beginning to kind of sway and dance with this beat that she's creating. It's angry dance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she can't. Uh, Otto's, Otto's irresistible dance. Right, um, yeah. What type a is dancing that? creature must use its movement to dance without leaving its space and has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws and attack rolls. Wow. While the target is affected by the spell, other creatures have advantage on attack rolls against it. Oh God. As an action, you can attempt a wisdom saving throw to regain control of yourself. Right. Does it have a element attached to it? Is it a type of spell? What do you mean? What type of spell is it? It is an Psychic. enchantment spell. Just enchantment, okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you just can't help and she continues singing this song as you're just you can't make your feet go where you want them to go. You're just kind of dancing in place. Uh-oh, she's doing the robo <laughs> <laughs> Um And then she will simply just probably stay where she is, actually. She'll just Alrighty. kind of tuck herself in the corner. Um, and that's her turn. Nova. So Sentry's banjaxed right now, isn't she? She is currently jamming away to this, um, this idol's song. So I've been at some 41, circa 2002. <laughs> 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 yeah, I saw him in like Norwich. Yeah. Just a 
such a I've weird seen reference. Them. They're good. They're a lot of fun, like. Yeah. Um, oh. Do you know what? I'm going to try to cast slow on everyone in the corner there. Okay. Does it affect multiple creatures? Um, you can alter time around up to six creatures of your choice in a 40-foot cube within range. Range is 120 foot. Sure. Um, each target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be affected by this spell for the duration. 15. She has magic resistance, so she has advantage. That is 15. She saves, but the little... Little bots. Uh, is it a charmed effect? I can't remember. I don't think it is. No. Okay. Uh, both drones, I'm pretty sure, are going to fail this. Yeah, they fail completely. So their speed is halved. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. minus two AC. Mm -hmm. uh, and minus two to dex saving throws, and they can't okay. use reactions. You can only use an action or a bonus action, not both. Oh! You cannot make more than one melee or ranged attack during its turn. Very interesting, yeah, very um, cool. Okay. And it, there's stuff if you cast a spell as well. That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, what level spell is that? Yeah, they don't cast spells, Four. but yeah, slow. It is, uh, Third. Fourth. Oh, fourth. Hmm? Oh. oh, you cast it as fourth, it's normally fourth. Yeah, oh. so it's actually a, it's a warlock, Hexblade Warlock oh, cool. uh, feat. Yeah. Trait. Sick. Cool. So you cast slow. Would you like to do anything else? Um, I'm gonna stay where I am. Okay. But yeah. Um. You can make wisdom saving throws on the end of your turn. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ayla. Ayla will attempt to do what Sentry did. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. Wait, but she's running forwards. What a chump move. You want a misty step back? <laughs> <laughs> or make a grapple attempt, yeah? Whoa! <laughs> That's uh, uncalled for. Oh, and oh, being, I was playing two characters at once. I will do a reckless. So am I. I'm playing four, actually. Uh, <laughs> reckless attack uh, for a 20 to hit <laughs> her, uh, which I believe will. Nice. God, I'm switching between a lot of things right now. Uh, so yeah, not by much, she kind of, uh, you see Samsara, this Eladrin, try and dodge out the way, but the Howling Tempest kind of sweeps in and catches her anyway. Um, she is going to take damage uh, equal to 1d8 plus 5. Uh, oh, and I should have had Ayla did Rage as a bonus action after Rage. Sure. Is it K-H-O-L-A-R for Kolar? Uh, K H yeah seven eleven point K H O L L A R. Are people trying to figure out? I'm trying to figure out an anagram for just it. How well, evil you I are. guess take out Hadar. From um, however, just as <laughs> a, she is not Thank affected you. by the slow spell, so she still has a yeah. reaction. When she is attack, when she takes damage, she uses her reaction to teleport thirty feet. So the second attack will miss. But also, did um the trot spell do anything to her? Yeah, elemental bane. It doesn't stop her okay. doing this. Yeah. Oak, hill, lake. Harold. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> as she, she watched, as she kind of like waves her hand and this arch of fire surrounds her, which she steps through, appears 30 feet away and Ayla is blasted by a bunch of uh, fire, uh, which she fails and she takes 10 points of fire damage. Oh, she's now in the middle of the room. Okay. Harold is in your name. Oh. But that uses some letters from Hadar though. Hot Do you want me to remove the Hadar? Bird. Sentry! Hello, hello. <laughs> I appreciate you guys doing a thing. Sorry. <laughs> if you remove Hadar, then we can figure out what the rest is. Right, so I can make a whiz save to oh, get out Oh, we do. Uh, we'll get through this uh, top round. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so I'm going to do a whiz save then and try and get out of this thing. Uh, yeah, so your action, you make a wisdom saving throw. Stop that dance. Oh, oh. Six. Elec. Not in <laughs> six plus. Eight. It's six plus my eight. bird oh, person. Yeah. <laughs> The sphere of so Elec. fifteen. Fifteen. He's also a bird. <laughs> I love you, but shut up. Sentry uh, <laughs> tries to like resist this this song, which is just for her. I will make a concentration check for her because she is technically concentrating on the spell, um, which she actually fails. So oh. the, the 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 effect would have gone. The the artist is already gone. Cool. Ayla's hit would have done enough damage. I rolled a natural one. Oh, wow. wow. Right, righty, righty. Let's see what you do have your pawns as well. spells Tom. I can do. Oh, yeah. Would the Actually, slow have affected Silver Axe? Silver? I don't know. Doesn't seem to. He's not. What's he up to? Just is in this containment unit, just crackling away with power. Bonus action. Kill. Uh, for a bonus action, Kill I'm going to cast Branding Smite on my axe. Okay. And then that'll be me. 
Oh, uh, well, you, don't, you have your action because you're no longer affected oh, by the spell. It would have gone oh, on her turn oh, yeah, when she got hit. Okay, cool. Then instead of that, then, I'm going to cast a Moonbeam on the axe. Okay, sure. I want to I free him. Well, it. Uh, uh, he would, he'd fail. He can't move. So how about just roll damage for me? Okay, so that'll be 2d10. Interesting. Interesting. One, and it's radiant damage. Yeah. Uh-oh. Interesting. <laughs> oh my god. Nine. Essentially Ooh. just won the battle in one Ooh. turn. <laughs> so you watch as you, you summon this column of um, of energy down on, so on the, the Eterna's chamber. The whole station reverberates and you begin to see the containment glass cracking as this dark power begins. Uh, you see the Eladrin kind of glance at it. Oh, sweetie, I wouldn't do that if I were you. That's going to be bad. That's going to be really bad. Uh, after Century, we go to one of the drones. Glass doors are kind of shut here, Boo. Oh, yeah. Down there. Um, Quill. Uh, oh, uh, I'm going to cast. No, it's shooting at you. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Um, oh. Drone <laughs> is going to fire. Did that move at half speed? Uh, it did. It okay. only moved five feet, Kim. Just saying. Give me a break. Uh, only an 11 to hit you. Nothing. Okay. The blast kind of like, it fires this beam of radiant light. Um, even though it passes you though, you see like there's this, like a little red dot uh, has been painted onto your chest. It's kind mm -hmm. of aiming this little red beam on you. The next attack against you has advantage. Um, it doesn't, it can only... Uh, yes, this is part of one attack. Uh, it can't make more I, than one melee or ranged attack. Yeah, it made one, one ranged attack. Okay. I, I what know. What type of uh, damage is that? It's, it didn't deal damage. <laughs> it missed him and has put a little red dot on his chest. Oh, it's just, it's just marked him, right? Okay. 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 <laughs> what element is that dot? Quill, <laughs> what is your dexterity modifier? Uh, it is plus two. Plus two? Okay. Uh, the other drone will also now move. The one with the weird magic? Yes. And it will. Weird science. It will turn on Ayla, and it will attempt to blast Ayla with a sonic pulse for a 23, which is actually going to hit Ayla for a change. Can they, can they do an element? Uh, are these <laughs> doing an element? This is force damage. Yes. I'm going to use my reaction to absorb that what for? into we, my gauntlet. We changed it. It can only do cold and acid. I did change it. I changed it a while ago because I thought it might be a bit too powerful if I did otherwise. Is that being updated in this? Maybe. So I did tell you, but... Wait, can you uh, absorb that force? I didn't have it. No. You can absorb cold or, or acid, his dichromancy abilities. Right. But if it was all elements, it would be a bit too strong, so I had to change it. Is that a spell? Was that a spell? No. It was an action. Cool. Carry on. It's technically using Magitek. It's not actually doing anything. And also, it can only do one action. <laughs> and there's a whole bunch of stuff. Ava else. takes seven points of damage <laughs> and has to make a strength saving throw, which she has advantage on. For not very high, actually. Uh, strength plus seven is 13, which is still enough. Yeah. Um, so the, the sonic pulse threatens to, to push Ayla back, but she kind of holds her hand up and is kind of resisted. Quill, your turn. Uh, okay, I'm going to cast at third level uh, a spiritual weapon. Um, so... See, and I totally know we have to end soon, but I just want to try and get through to the top round of the next Yeah, one. so a weapon on Shantara. That's mm -hmm. her name, isn't it? Um, Shansara. Shansara. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds like Shantani. And I want to whack with that. It does. So the spiritual weapon is another, like, howling gale. Okay. But with feathers. Uh, I'm going to hit with that. Nine plus seven is 16. 16 doesn't hit her. She throws herself under the strike. Ah! Goes over the top of her head. Um, and as a cantrip, I'll do a sacred flame on the boy that has got a laser on me. Okay, sure. Uh, so he has to make a deck save. Yes. Deck saving throw, nine, fails. Cool, 2d8 damage. Five and a six, 11 damage. 11? Radiant, yeah? Uh, yes, I think it's What's normally. It's force, a spiritual weapon. Uh, no, it's... I think it's uh, right. Right. At the top of the round, is, uh, force and this is where we're going to end today. Oh, you did um, Sacred Flame, sorry, yeah. At the top of the round, Shansara calls out, ILS, a little help here, please. And you watch as from the ceiling, four beams, columns of red light, what? descend down. 
and drag themselves across oh, the room. Oh my god. Cool. So let's see who this hits, shall we? Well, so lasers. Yes. We're Mission Impossible now. Yes. So Ayla is technically actually out of the way. Oh, that's... Yep. So, so... So, wait, do they sweep across the room it does. in one go? Yes. Uh, so I'm just going to have to do this over, I think. Yeah. So, uh, Sentry was not there. Sentry was yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> so, it passes over, so it will hit uh, Sentry. The droid. Does it hit the droid? Um, no, it doesn't affect the droids or Samsara. It mm. temporarily pauses over them. Um, Quill, miss. So, only only Sentry, this first one, as it hits. Uh, but we'll resolve that next time as we do have Oh, oh how oh, much damage does Sentry take? <laughs> You'll find out next week. Oh, That's cool. Oh, no. So as the lasers coalesce overhead, we see Sentry look up as this beam of red light begins to, to phase over her. You're getting torn in half! And with that, <laughs> oh, no. I have an idea about something, but I probably should save it for next week. Maybe. Me too. Oh, God. Yeah. Yay! Yeah! Right, uh, donations. Joe Wadi 18 How to make Kim go mad. Put her on an oh, astral you? citadel and give her a cryptic code that she goes and whispers at everything and lips. Um, absolutely. I well, we figured out what ILS is. Uh, Smeek the Goblin. Hi, Tomb Hazel. Mwah. Uh, <laughs> Woody, but busy. Been real busy these last few weeks and so not able to watch live. I shall remain in the pod squad for now, but please enjoy my weekly dono. Thank you, Woody. Thank you, Woody. Daft Day 41. Echo is back. Best Yay. scouty floaty boy. Thank you very much. Hyper L did a thousand bits. Hi guys, lost track of time and missed most of the stream, so I'll check it out later in the VOD. Anyways, love you all and Eros is amazing. It actually inspired me to make my own campaign that had its first official session last week, and I'm so excited that my players will do. Anyway, love you all, have a great day. Please don't kill the Mark, I love them all. Well, it's not up to me. Um, and then HyperDL did another 500 bits with a lot of Mark, please don't kill the precious children, and then lots of emails. <laughs> <laughs> Frank is at 100 over that, it looks like. Ace of Thorns, dare I, dare I, ah, what the heck. Set the path. Uh, hugs and get well soon, Katie. Da 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 da. da, da, da. I don't, I'm guessing da, 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 that's the second one. Varys, thank you very much for the donation. And then Lightning Wing Dragon as well. When Quill dies, you can announce Oak Hill Lake, like when they say Hyde Park Corner or London Bridge is down. <laughs> when your royalty dies for them British folk. That's an anagram. Oh, oh, Oak Hill Lake. Yeah. Click add color. There's definitely more in there. It's probably going to be something stupid. Ellie. Like, yes. Like um. Anyway. Chuck Norris. I've got nothing. <laughs> Join us next week. We'll be back. We'll be in silly Halloween costumes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Check us out. Don't forget all the podcasts, all the good shit, Patreon, subs on Twitch, all of that stuff. We'll see you next time. Enjoy some ads. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. See you next week. Yeah. Yeah. See you like savings next week.